Hospital, the short man, number five, James DeBoard. There's the whistle. This game is officially started as Kyle Rhodes kicked the squibber to the right side. It's going to be taken by a short man. Ball is loose. Taken by number 20, Michael Pugh. Pugh's got speed. He's also got nailed. Pugh is nailed at about the 32-yard line. Great job by the defensive unit of the Knightstown Panthers as they just swarmed to the ball. One outstretched arm came and grabbed him freely, and then about six other players dove in and took him down. Craig Ritchie, the first fan there to make contact, along with Jim Carmichael. So it's going to be first and 10. They'll spot the ball officially at the 32. And that's where Pioneer will break the huddle. And this high-powered offense will be tested by Knightstown's non-flexing defense. Wide out to the right comes DeBoard. Take the quarterback, single setback. That's Pew. Odom on a long signal count. Takes it. Hands off straight up the middle. Pew's got five, now six yards. Stops as he gets across the 35 to the 36. And he's tackling the play by number 66, Jason Chapman, along with Jim Carmichael. Running to the right that time, uh, not a gain of much as he is brought down immediately by that de defensive uh, unit of the Panthers. Gain of four, they move it back a yard or two, and that's good. I guess his knee much, must have touched. So it brings up a second and six. Again, now they go wide out. They'll come in a slot formation to the left. Now in motion, here comes one of the Pioneers. Tate on a keep, turns the corner, he's across the 40, and he turns the corner, and he is off, and nobody's going to catch him, nobody's going to ca catch Odom, and it's going to be touchdown, Pioneer. A great, great running play there by the quarterback, as it was number one, a great fake coming out of the backfield, they could not pick up on the ball, and once that young man got the corner turn, he was off to the races. Well, 63-yard run by Odom, he turned the corner and outran everybody, Closest man there was Bonowitz and Collip, and they were at least a step and a half off. So Pioneer strikes quickly, and Knightstown finds himself down in a very unformidable position, six to nothing. Extra point now going to be kicked by Pioneer. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is up, and it's going to be short. He muffed it. Number 24, Shane Weaver, the place kicker, cannot connect. So with 11.07 to play here in the first quarter, Knightstown trails 6-0. Odom doing a very, very nice job of ball faking there as uh, the Knightstown defensive unit caught off guard because they thought that the run was going to happen to the right on a handoff, and Odom had that ball coming out of the fake and brought it around to his left and was off to the race. Well, there's no doubt. Yeah, there's no doubt why he is the second leading rusher on this team. Excellent foot speed, and that's something Knightstown... Uh, hadn't encountered, so now Knightstown's going to have to rebound, and this was a concern of many, many football fans, and that was how the Panthers would rebound back should they find themselves on the trailing end, and that's exactly where they are right now. Knightstown getting a little bit more timeout with the TV timeout, and Coach Don Willard says, hey, shake it off, no big deal. You know, we've got a good offense, too. Knightstown is not exactly sloppy. Well, we absolutely have, and uh, again, that's... Uh, uh, about the, what, second play coming out of the box. There's still 11.07, a lot of time left in this quarter for, first of all, the Knightstown Panthers to score, and first of all, for them to do what they do best, and that's ball control. Well, I don't think you'll see that play go for a 63-yard touchdown again. Well, that was a great, great fake by Odom as uh, when he handed that ball off, supposedly what looked like to one of the backs on a cross pattern, uh, everybody went to the, the, all the defense went to their left, and here came Odom to their right. My goodness. Boy, he has some speed, doesn't yes, he? he does. He was moving on, going down the sideline. Well, Tate Odom scores on a 63-yard scamper with 11.07 to play here in the first quarter, and just like that, Knightstown has been scored upon the earliest score of the year. And Knightstown's going to have to pull up the bootstraps one more time as they await this long TV timeout. And this is the bad thing about being on television is you've got so much waiting. The kids are fired up. The adrenaline is pumping. And next thing you know, you've got a two-minute wait. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, this isn't the regular TV timeout that we're talking about them taking. And uh, it's really got to uh, slow you down a little bit go both ways, both uh, the Pioneers and the Panthers. Well, that time they ran around. Ben Brooks is in, and Brooks got blocked to the inside. Nice leap blocking by Pioneer to spring Odom. So Knights down the first team to break the huddle. They're back out onto the field. And now the Pioneer squad will come out as well. Back to receive for Knightstown will be Craig Ritchie along with Ian Hayes as they will line up about their own 10-yard line. And the kicking chores will go to number 72, Aaron Collins. 
If you just joined us, Pioneer leads seven, or actually six to nothing. The point after attempt was no good, as it was muffed by place kicker Shane Weaver. So Knightstown will get their first offensive possession here momentarily. After Collins marks off his approach to the football. Knightstown going to our right, which would be to the east, and Pioneer to the left, which is the west. Collins now approaches the football, puts a foot into it. Nice kick. It's going to be Richie at the 9. Richie up to the 15. Got a wedge of blockers. Turns, runs lateral. He runs around the end and is hit at the 18. Falls to the 19 and taken down at the 20-yard line by number 66. And that is Shane Wireman. Craig Richie, if he could have brought it on around to the, his right side, I think would have had a lot of open field there. But all of a sudden, Craig turned it back in and was caught immediately. Senior quarterback Eric Scheinman is going to have to do an outstanding job of play faking and, and uh, running the football team as they show the replay of the 60-yard, 63-yard score. And closest man there was Ian Hayes, and he was left in the dirt. First and 10 nights down from their own 20. Crawford and Hayes in the backfield behind Scheiman. First play goes to Johnson. He's through up to near the 25, maybe five on the play. Nice blocking up front by the Knightstown front line of Roush along with Quiz. And once again, you see the athletic ability of those Knightstown Panthers as we allude to about them being in shape as uh, no problem running that ball straight forward and right into the gut of the defense of the Pioneer. You know, this could be a very high scoring affair. Well, it absolutely could because I don't think Knightstown will have much of a problem moving this football. First and, or uh, second and five after the five yard pickup. Again, they go to Johnson. He runs to the outside across the 30, down to the 34 yard line, and it's the first down, Knightstown. Ryan Johnson uh, bringing that ball over the right side and then cutting out to the right, picking up some very valuable yardage. Nine yards for the Panthers that time by Ryan Johnson. Well, so far, Pioneer hasn't offered much defense as Knightstown has owned the trenches, and that's exactly where the game's going to be won along that front line as Pioneer will line up in a three-man front. You also notice Knightstown does not spend much time in the huddle also. 10-10 to play here in the first. Out of the wishbone come the Panthers. Scheinman on a snap. They go to Johnson. He stutter steps, gets across the line of scrimmage, and forward progress going to be marked to the 36, gain of two. And that's exactly why they went to a three-man front for the Pioneers, because they're going to try to catch our running backs in that secondary for short yardage. Johnson picks up two and a half that time, brings up a second and seven. Brian Johnson, again, going to be the man today. A Drew Crawford yet to carry the football. This time, Richie will split wide to the right. Out of the slot is Ian Hayes. The tight end is Plank, and he'll line up on the left side. Twin setback this time. Hayes goes in motion to the left. Scheiman on an inside hand up it goes to Crawford and he has nothing. Drew Crawford hit immediately out there by a very, very strong player for the uh, Pioneer. Pioneers. Yeah, it's uh, number 45, Nick Williams. No gain. Nick Williams on the stop, so no gain on the play for Knightstown. Brings up a third and seven. And the Panthers again. This is what Coach Don Willard does not like, is this third and long, and we have seen how quickly Pioneer can score with a football, so we don't want to give it back to them too fast. This time, both Richie and Hayes will line up on the left side. Knightstown in an obvious passing situation. Scheinman takes the snap, picks up the block, the pass, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Pugh. Pugh's got the foot speed, and he is taken down at the Knightstown 30. So just holding back and uh, laying low, Pugh was able to pick that ball off as it was thrown over the right side of the Knightstown line and brought it back to the left for a good field position against the Knightstown Panthers. Well, this is not how Coach Don Willard wanted things to start out as Knightstown finds himself on the trailing end of the score, 6 nothing after the quarterback rambles 63 yards and now Scheiman is picked off by Pugh with 8.38 to play here in the first. It's going to be Pioneer football at the Knightstown 30. Again, the quarterback is Tate Odom, the man who scored moments ago. They run the same play inside handoff. It goes to Pugh, and Pugh bowls his way down to the Knightstown 26. Great ball faking out there by the Pioneer quarterback, Odom, as he is able to catch the defensive unit off, off stride there as uh, he gets that ball into the hands of the ball carrier. Well, Pugh picks up four. Brings up a second and six. And the Knightstown nice front four is going to be tested, as they have been already. Nice ball faking that time by Odom. Wide out this time is DeBord. He goes to the right side. Pew out of the backfield. Twin slot formation for Pioneer. 
Now in motion goes Jamie Walton. And straight up the middle, it's Pew. And Pew is down inside the Knightstown 20 at about the 18. First down for Pioneer. Straight run ahead against the Knightstown Panther defensive unit that time as Pioneer able to move this ball handily against the Knightstown defense. They are a very, very good football team. No doubt about it, Pioneer is pumped and ready to play this game. Knightstown looking just a little bit sluggish, or possibly Pioneer is just that quick. We talked about foot speed, and that could be the difference. Well, we knew they were fast. Uh, we've always alluded to Knightstown as being quick, but this Pioneer unit is fast. First and 10 for Pioneer. They run to the left side. Odom on a keeper. Same play that scored moments ago. He turns it up and is taken down at the 13 by Landon Collins. And Odom, not afraid to turn the ball up on the quarterback option, decided to keep it. And Odom picks up five yards. So it brings up a second and five with the ball sitting squarely on the Knightstown 13-yard line. And Pioneer trying to strike quickly twice here in the first quarter with 7-10 to play. Tons of options that the Pioneer uh, team is able to run off of their offense as you can see it really breaking up up here in the booth that they've got a lot of different ways to go out there. Second and five for Pioneer. Single set back is Pew. In motion goes Walden. Handoff goes to Pew. Stutter steps inside the 10 down to the 8. And Kyle Rhodes in on the stop along with Drew Crawford. It's Kyle's second tackle. Crawford's first. And he picks up, uh, looks like, four more. So brings up a third and one. They can pick up the first down and still have a first and goal. Knightstown defensive unit going to have to really dig in now as uh, the uh, advancement of the ball by the Pioneer is taking its toll. Ball on the nine-yard line of Knightstown. 6.20 to play in the first quarter. Pioneer on a roll to the right. Odom on a keeper, turns the corner, got a blocker, and he is going to get in touchdown. Great, great second effort by Odom. You have to give him that. Uh, he was uh, could have been pushed out of bounds over there, but got the ball uh, into the end zone. Greg Ritchie was there, but not before Odom stretched out and put the ball over the goal line. And just like that, it's 12-0. And now we'll see if Pioneer goes for the two-point conversion to try to get this on an even scale again. Well, I'm sure that the Pioneer offensive unit uh, is... Uh, Catching on to uh, the ability they have to move that football against this nice down defense. They're very fast. Walton in motion. Odom on a pass. Looks across. The man is there good. Not even a defender within five yards was David Russell. He scores on the two-point conversion from Odom to Russell. And just like that, it is 14-0. And I think I see why Pioneer is a high-scoring team. Well, they really are. They move that ball well. They have many options that they can run off of their offense as uh, you can see the plays starting to uh, form up here in the booth and uh, they can go with the pass or the quick uh, flip or uh, on a quarterback keeper. Let's take a quick one minute timeout. You're listening to Knightstown Panther Football on Young Country 90.7 FM. The RCA Dome, I'm Mike York along with Lee Stacy and Ryan Nunn and the Knightstown Panthers find themselves in a position that they've never faced all season long. They are down 14 to nothing at the 6.09 mark here in the first quarter of action, and the Pioneer Panthers are not looking back. Well, they really aren't. Uh, these kids have come to play, and uh, they may be lightweights in the category of the pounds, but let me tell you, they can make anybody's track team. This, this outfit can really fly. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, a lot of foot speed. Pioneer, look at Odom. He plays quarterback. He takes the kickoff as far as uh, receives the opening kickoff, and now he plays on the special teams along the sideline right in front of Knightstown's bench. And he also is a free safety, too, on the defensive end of the ball, too. Now, that's kind of injury to insult. Here we go with a kickoff. It's going to be short, and it's going to be by Craig Ritchie at the 12. Now the 20. Ritchie up to the 25, now the 30, and is taken down at the Knightstown 29. One man, and Ritchie had a lot of green between him and the end zone, but uh, he was tripped up. The number 44, Dusty Baker. So Knightstown will get over on their second possession. First time, Odom on an interception stepped in front of Richie took the ball away, and uh, five plays later, they score from a one-yard run by Tate Odom for his second touchdown of the afternoon. Well, hopefully this Knightstown uh, Panther team can settle down now and go to work and get this game back in hand. Knightstown ball at the 29, 6.04 and counting, Knightstown up to the line of scrimmage. Scheiman under quiz, takes a snap, they go to Johnson, he's across the line of scrimmage, bulls his way across the 30 to about the 33 before he stopped and thrown back. And they will mark forward progress 
at the Knightstown 34. So that's a pickup of five for Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson uh, still able to carry that ball, but this uh, defensive unit for the uh, Pioneer team is uh, able to collapse on the ball immediately uh, anywhere it goes uh, with that great speed that they have and uh, put the stops to it. Well, before that carry, Knightstown has carried the football four times for only 16 yards, so it's looking a little bit better for Knightstown. 5.26 to play, second and five for Knightstown. Again, from their own 34-yard line. Knightstown not being in Pioneer territory as of yet. They go to Hayes on a sweep. Cuts it back inside, picks up what looks to be enough for the first down. Depends on the spot, but he's near the 39. Ian Hayes running one of those slice patterns like Ryan Johnson taking the ball around the left side and then breaking it back to the right. Looks like he's just shy of the first down by maybe a half a yard or so. So it brings up a third and one. And this is a drive that Knightstown has got to continue. They do not want to give the football back to Pioneer this early. Clock shows 450 and counting. 14 nothing our score. Pioneer on top. Kind of neat to see the big screen, the diamond vision with Knightstown players on it, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, 31 for Knightstown. They go to Crawford. He's got the first down and more as he picks up two. And Drew Crawford gets Knightstown's second first down of the quarter. Drew Crawford just pulling himself ahead there, and if this Knightstown unit, as I think they can, uh, will come back uh, down to uh, ground level now after uh, having uh, been thumped twice on the touchdown end of it, I think they can get this game turned around. Well, we'll see exactly what the Knightstown squad is made of if, if they can pull it out. Uh, right now they trail by 14. They don't want to dig that hole any deeper. First and 10 for the Panthers. The ball sitting on the Knightstown 42. Out of the slot is Hayes. Inside handoff, it goes to Crawford. He runs lateral, breaks through, and gets near the 43, maybe the 44. 32 you know, the amazing thing about this Pioneer unit, uh, they are so fast that they can get, even though they're lightweight in body, they can get two or three men to you very quickly, and once you get that kind of weight on you, you can't go anywhere with it. Pickup of three yards on the play brings up a second and seven. I've been noticing the Pioneer defense has been blitzing a lot, coming up to force Shyman out of the pocket quite a bit and also to rush, send the rushers in different directions they wouldn't normally run. Second and uh, seven for the Panthers after the three-yard gain by Crawford. The ball on the Knights down 43. Here's a handoff that goes to Ryan Johnson. He's across the 45, out to the 46, maybe the 47. The Knights down team now uh, it looks like uh, with their offensive line, they're just trying to make a hole. They're trying to start to wear these people down if they can. That's been their success during the year. Don't know if they can do it with this bunch of boys, no. but I know that's what their intentions are now. Well, they were talking about having to hit this Pioneer squad hard, but so far you've got to catch them to hit them hard. Tackle and play by number 77, Josh Sickler. <laughs> hard to hit a moving target. <laughs> when it moves Game like that. Two more on the play for uh, Ryan Johnson. So... Uh, Brings up a third and five for Knightstown. Delayed handoff to Johnson. And Johnson's going to be short of the first down right at the 50-yard line. He needed about a yard and a half more. Well, thankfully, we got what we did because the Pioneer unit, when they tackled him, about three of them, they had to drag him back or in his favor to, uh, to gain about another half yard to a yard. Well, I think Don Willard will go for it right here. This is his 31st year of coaching. And as we know, Coach Willard not afraid to go for a fourth and one. And that's exactly what Knightstown's going to do. The ball sitting right on the 50-yard line. This is the biggest play for Knightstown here in the first quarter. Clock down to 219. The Knightstown crowd comes to their feet. Ricky will split wide to the left. Full house backfield and Hayes, Crawford, and Johnson. Line runs to the right side. Ryan Johnson has got the first down. The drive will continue. Ryan Johnson going over the right side and uh, really... This Pioneer unit, uh, even though they are, are not big boys, that when they hit you, Ryan was hit that time, and you could just see him shudder from the effect of the blow. Knightstown overloaded the right side of the line with all but two Panthers, and without a doubt, you knew where they were going to come. And they came to the right side. Ryan Johnson picks up two more. Now the ball down to the Pioneer 40 seven-yard line, and that is Knightstown's third first down here in the first quarter, and the first time into that territory. Game clock down to a minute 50 and counting. Richie comes wide to the right this time, out of the slot also to the right is Hayes. Scheiman checks the line, takes a snap, pitch, it goes to Ryan Johnson. He's got a blocker, turns the field, and gets across the 45 down to the 44-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds by Eric Forge. Henry and, and Ryan Johnson picking up another four yards, and Ryan Johnson having a big, big day so far. 
Well, if uh, the figures are right here, Henry is 169 pounds and Forge is 186 pounds. And so on a team tackle like that, that's uh, quite a bit of weight coming at you. And if they've got the ability to move that quickly on their defensive unit and then hit, that's got to take its toll on the player itself. Brian Johnson has rushed eight times for 31 yards here in the opening quarter. Now two wideouts for Knightstown. Richie comes to the right. Hayes will go left. Out of the eye are the Panthers. Scheiman on a long, delayed handoff. It goes to Ryan Johnson. He is hit at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for maybe one. Ryan Johnson, seeing that he was going to be hit that time as the line collapsed on him, just jumped toward the Pioneer team. So uh, Ryan still playing out there with his head well on his shoulders. Picks up a two, so it's going to bring up a third and four. Knightstown needs to get to the Pioneer 37-yard line for a first down. Clock down to 30 seconds here in the first quarter. Pioneer on top, 14 to nothing. Again, twin sets back for Knightstown. Johnson and Crawford. Hayes in the slot to the right. Scheiman on a handoff. It goes to Crawford. Stutter steps and he breaks into the secondary down to the 32. First down for Knightstown. Great run that time by Drew Crawford as Drew was hit immediately at the line. Turned right, just threaded the needle and took it on for a few more yards. A total of seven out there on that carry for Drew Crawford. First and ten, Knightstown. The deepest penetration for the Panthers at the Pioneer 32. And we are probably not going to get another play before the quarter. So that's the end of one. Knightstown trails Pioneer 14 to nothing. We'll be back for the second quarter. You're listening to state championship action on Young Country 90.7 FM. Month after month. Indianapolis, this is the Class 1A state championship. And your Knightstown Panthers trail Pioneer 14 to nothing. And Lee Pioneer scored very, very quickly. Well, they did. Uh, they jumped out immediately by a great run by their quarterback, Tate Odom. And uh, he brought that ball around the left side, and when he got the afterburners turned on, he was running away from the Knightstown defensive unit. And then the second time out, uh, another score. This uh, quarterback has a great ability to really fake that football on a handoff and uh, catch the defensive unit of ours off. It doesn't look like it's any more of a fake than what we have seen from some of the other real good quarterbacks this year, but something is wrong out there because well, we're not picking up on it. Yeah, the foot speed's amazing. It took them 53 seconds and two plays to score their first touchdown on an end around to the left side by quarterback Tate Odom as he rambled for 63 yards for the first score, and then after uh, Pew, or was it? No, it was Odom intercepted uh, Eric Scheiman, right. and five plays later they scored on a one-yard run and then got the two-point conversion for the 14-point lead. Action just about set to resume as this time Richie will split wide to the left. Hayes will go right. Out of the eye again is Knightstown. They hand off to the second man three. It's Ryan Johnson. He picks up uh, maybe two. In the first quarter of action, Johnson carried the ball nine times for 32 yards. Drew Crawford only touched the ball four times. He picked up 12 yards, and Ian Hayes had one carry for four yards. Scheiman coming over now to get uh, the next... Uh, play back into progress there he heads back out to the huddle as uh, Knightstown trying to find a way to start this ball moving as this uh, very very quick defensive unit of Pioneer collapses to that ball every time no matter where it goes I think if it would rain somebody would hit the sprinklers I think Knightstown would probably play better <laughs> out of the slot to the right is Hayes this time Crawford and Johnson behind Scheim and the handoff inside he goes to Crawford he turns the corner he's got some running room across the 30 stops and is tackled at the 27 Stays on his feet, tries to fall forward, but they will mark the forward progress to the Pioneer 27-yard line. That time, five defenders for Pioneer were all over Drew Crawford. So this team able to pick up on a runner coming out of the secondary very quickly. He picks up four more yards as Drew Crawford. So it brings up a third and four for Knightstown, and a third and four is not bad shape. Third and six, seven, and eight is what you don't like to have to have because then you've got an obvious passing situation. Well, that's absolutely right. We have the ability to get that ball this far instead of that seven or eight yards that we have faced earlier. Crawford and Johnson behind Scheiman. Long signal count. Scheiman on a straight drop. Pumps one, puts it up. He's got Richie in the flat. Got it. First down, nice town down at the 15. Craig Richie making a great catch out there as he was hit by David Russell right after the catch. A 5'9 senior at 159 pounds and uh, uh, might be a little bit of a mirror situation there. They gave Craig Ritchie an awful lot of room out there to catch that ball. That they did. Craig Ritchie from Eric Scheiman on a 12-yard pickup, and Knightstown continuing the drive down at the Pioneer 15, and so far Pioneer has been unable to stop the Knightstown Panthers. Second quarter just underway, 10-12 to play. Knightstown on the drive. 
Deepest penetration. They go on a handoff to Crawford. He bulls his way, stays on his feet, down to the 10. Five-yard scamper by Crawford. Crawford carrying that football over the right side, as Mike York told you, and picks up three defenders, uh, drags them another uh, yard and a half to two yards. So great, great move out there by Drew Crawford. Well, this Pioneer team is not having it easy on defense because as you've seen that, it takes more than just one Pioneer defender to stop one Knightstown runner or offensive man. Well, I certainly hope that this conditioning pays off as we have talked about all year because Pioneer is very quick, but maybe we can wear them down, maybe. Second and five from the 10 for your Knightstown Panthers. Hayes will come in motion to the left side. Scheiman on the handoff, it goes to Johnson, and he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Ryan Johnson very fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage that time, and that will bring up a third and five, and Knightstown not wanting to come away empty right here. The defensive unit of the uh, uh, Pioneer team is very, very reluctant uh, to tackle uh, around the leg. They're grabbing around the waist, but get two or three on the man if they're able to bring him down, but they're not tackling by the leg. Nice down facing a third and five. They can pick up a first down and still continue the drive. The ball sitting on the 10. Nice town been known to throw a pass out in the flat at this point in a game. Scheiman takes a snap. They go to Johnson. Johnson stutter steps, gets maybe one, and that's all. Down to the nine. Ryan Johnson picks up one yard, so that brings up a fourth and four. And again, Nice town's going to go for it without a doubt. This deep in the territory, you've got nothing to lose. Nice town needing to pick up. Four more yards down to the Pioneer five and sustain this drive. Clock down to 8.20 already here in the second quarter as this quarter is just flying. Well, the Knightstown offensive unit uh, using up a lot of time, which they're very good at, but we've got to get on that scoreboard. Now the crowd comes alive out of the eye and a slot to the left are the Panthers. Scheinman again under quiz, takes a snap, straight drop back. Here comes the pressure, pumps one. And Scheinman turns it up, finally throws a football. Touchdown, Knightstown! Great, great play there. As Eric Scheinman playing with that great ability that we have seen all year to just play heads-up football. Scheinman not getting shook by the footsteps that were coming, and they were coming hard and fast. And also, Ian Hayes in there on a great, great hand. Ian Hayes, the recipient of that Eric Scheinman bullet. And I tell you what... Scheinman never saw the pressure coming from the backside because they had three men in the backfield, and Scheinman eluded that and still managed to get the pass off. Well, James DeBoard, a 6'1 senior from Pioneer at 157 pounds, hit Ian Hayes like a rock, so these kids must be hard as nails. Josh Plank connects on the point after. Knightstown has cut that lead in half. They now trail Pioneer 14-7. to now that's the Knightstown Panther team that we have seen and Coach Burns looks to the stands and says, let's have some noise. Well, you know, you can't, I cannot get over the ability of, of uh, Eric Scheiman to just play as cool as he can. You're down two touchdowns, you get run out of the pocket, you see that uh, the footsteps are coming and you've got three defenders coming at you and he still finds a receiver. Great, great play by Eric Scheiman. I imagine Eric would uh, say he was glad he never saw the pressure because if he had been any slower, he would have been dog meat. He would have lost four or five yards. The next thing you know, he'd have been ground into the turf. So Knightstown cuts the lead in half. Pioneer 14, Knightstown 7. We are 7.55 to play in the first half. Knightstown back in this thing, and now the defense is going to have to flex its muscles because so far the defense has not done its job. Well, they have not, and then they haven't done the job, uh, not because they haven't been trying, haven't faced this kind of speed, I don't believe, in quite some time, and uh, possibly all this year. This, uh, this offensive unit of the uh, Pioneer Panthers can flat rock. Well, I don't think it's Knightstown. The problem is not that they are moving out of their position. I think Knightstown is staying at home, but I think the problem is they're just not used to seeing the running backs hitting the holes as quickly as Pioneer is getting there. And by the time Knightstown reacts, it's too late. They've turned the corner, and once they get out into the flat, we've already seen that Knightstown does not have the foot speed to catch up once you have uh, either an Odom or a few out in the flat. No, there's no drag race uh, to even think about once Pioneer gets into the open, they're gone. Well, now they say uh, Odom is the fastest man on this team, even though Pugh has the most yards. Tate Odom can run a 4-4-40. Coach Scott Stanley told me earlier in the week. Well, that's uh, moving on. That's booking. Kyle Rose will tee it up from his own 40 and kick back to Mr. Odom inside his own 10. And as we've seen many times, it's not going to get that far as 
Kyle will go to the sidelines once again. It goes to the right. Picked up at the 21 by David Russell. He's up to the 30. Now the 35 turns and stops and falls forward at the 36. And there he's hit by a host of Knightstown tacklers led by Jim Carmichael. Coming also, in that time trying to help out there was Ian Hayes. Ian overran that uh, ball carrier that time or he would have had him about five yards back. Excellent field position for Pioneer to start their third possession. They've scored on their first two. So Scheiman gets the score and his picture's up on the big screen on the Diamond Vision. And Eric Scheiman uh, bringing the Knightstown Panthers back on a long, long march, eating some clock up, and now Knighttown will burn a timeout. And with that, we will take a one-minute timeout. You're listening to Championship Action on Young Country 90.7 FM. Joe, I'm Mike York, along with Lee Stacy and Ryan Nunn. And Ryan Nunn, what do you think so far? Well, this has been fabulous. I'm glad you brought me here today to indulge this. I am loving every bit of it, and I'm sure the players are nervous, but yet excited that they're here. Well, Knightstown probably got the nerves out of their system now as they've gotten back into this thing. They trail Pioneer 14-7. to Knightstown back on defense as Pioneer, after the kickoff, they get the ball back to the 36-yard line, and that's where they'll start their third possession here in the second quarter of action. All right, quarterback Tate Odom again up to the line of scrimmage. In motion goes David Russell. Odom hands off to the first man through. That's Pugh. Pugh up near the 38. And Pugh picks up uh, maybe two. And they'll spot it at the 39. So he picks up three, brings up a second and seven. Big stop that time by Craig Ritchie as he came up and really put the pop on the ball carrier. Pugh very quick to the hole. That's what Knightstown is not accustomed to seeing. The backs that get there so fast. One wide out to the left for Pioneer. Out of the backfield comes Pugh along with David Russell. Russell in motion, inside handoff on a reverse, and this time Knightstown stuffs it after a gain of one. Joe Quiz on the stop. It's carried by Jamie Wallen. Quiz on the stop. And this is the first time that Pioneer has faced a third and six. Well, you're absolutely right. They've been able to move that football handily against the Panthers, and uh, maybe we're starting to catch up with the quickness of Pioneer. That time a counter play, and it did not work to Wallen, so this time Pioneer will send out two wide outs to the right. Man in motion to the left side is the tight end at Eric Forge. They run to the right side, Odom on a keeper. He's going to turn the corner on a quarterback option and throws it to Forge, and he's going to be short of the first down by three or four yards. Contact made there by Drew Crawford and Ian Hayes. Crawford and Hayes coming in and really putting the pop on the ball carrier, so uh, maybe we'll let them know that we're here. Nice pop that time as Wallen took the quarterback option and goes out of bounds at the Pioneer 44. So in for the first punt of the afternoon. For Pioneer, let's see who's going to do the honors here. Odom will play up close. Looks like number 11, Joe DeBoard. Richie and Hayes deep for Knightstown. Long signal count. DeBoard looks, puts a foot into it. Uh, it's a low kick. It's going to be Hayes at the 25. He takes the ball, runs around, got a blocker. Now to the 30, and it's taken down at the 31. Good open field tackle by Matt Henry from Pioneer. And Ian Hayes and the Knightstown Panthers will take over right there at the 31 with 6.17 to play here in the half. 14-7, Pioneer on top. Knightstown, uh, again, uh, facing a real tough team here as Pioneer able to get up on the coverage of that kick. And... Uh, Although Hayes carrying that ball wide to the right, uh, he was uh, hit at almost where he caught it. This is good. Last possession for Pioneer was three and out. And Knightstown now need, needing another drive like they had last time to get the ball in the end zone. Richie will go to the right. Tight end is playing. Full set backfield for the Panthers. Scheiman under quiz. Second man through is Johnson, and he gets across the 31 to the 32. He might have got one. And it looks to be that Pioneer is starting to key on Ryan Johnson just a little bit. Ian Hayes limps off the field. Looks like he might have turned the left ankle just a little bit. Seven defenders that time are in the area where the ball was being run to. Seven Pioneers able to get to and cover that particular running play. Ian Hayes in some pain on the sideline as he is grabbing his helmet and he is flat on his back. And it looked like he either rolled the left ankle or possibly the left knee. Looks like they're working on the ankle. Second and nine for Knightstown. Scheiman on the snap. They go to Johnson to the right side this time. He is hit at about the 34. And Ryan Johnson picks up two more. So Ryan Johnson picks up two after being stopped by Dusty Baker. 
and that's going to bring up a third and six. And that's the long distance. Anything over five makes it a little bit more difficult. But Knights down again been very adept at picking that play and that yardage up to keep a drive alive. Clock down to 5.09 and counting in the half. Scheiman's got the play from Coach Don Willard and staff. He's back in the huddle. Hayes still down on the sideline. Now he tries to get back up. Going to try to walk it off a little bit. Might have been just a stinger, but uh, he is favoring that left ankle just a little bit. Scheiman gets up to the line, doesn't like what he sees, and he'll burn a timeout. That's Knightstown's second here in the first half. And with that, we'll take a 60-second timeout. You're listening to Knightstown and none live from the RCA Dome, and Knightstown and Pioneer locked up in a good football game, and this is the way the Class 1A championship ought to be. Both squads come in 14-0, and and the winner of this one is going to be the very first team to go 15-0 and in Indiana State High School history. Well, both of these teams are uh, really giving it their all right now. This Pioneer unit, as we have uh, found out, is extremely fast out there afoot, and uh, they have been able so far to... Uh, collapse at least half of their team towards a play, no matter what type of play Knightstown runs. Knightstown will line up this time with two wide outs to the left. Ian Hayes still on the bench, getting an ankle retaped. Knightstown facing a third and long. Scheiman rolls to pass. Same pass before. He's got a man in the flat. It's intercepted again. Same exact play that they did the first time, and James DeBoard stepped in front of the intended receiver, Craig Ritchie, and again... Eric Scheinman should have not thrown that football. That was the exact same pass that they intercepted the first time. Well, it absolutely was, uh, and the defender just laying low there because of that great speed that they have and able to move immediately ahead and in on Ritchie for the reception. Well, Knightstown turns the ball over, a second turnover for Knightstown, so Pioneer will get the football at the Knightstown 42 with 4.45 to play here in the first half. Hayes on the bench, and they show uh, him getting his ankle taped. Out of the backfield comes Pugh along with Russell. Russell goes in motion. Odom on a roll to the left side. Turns it up. Big hole, and he is stopped by Craig Ritchie. Nice open field tackle by Ritchie, but not before Odom picks up five, maybe six yards. Odom once again showing that uh, great uh, ability to uh, look like he has made a handoff, and then all of a sudden just with an atomic burst of speed bring it out of that backfield in in around on the left side. Outstanding quarterback is Tate Odom. He's a senior, 177, standing six feet tall, and he is fleet-footed. Clock down to 412. Second and four for Pioneer. Single setback is Pew. Now coming in motion, it goes to Pew. He's got the first down. Chapman on the stop. And they're going to be very, very close if he didn't get it. Jason Chapman on the solo tackle that time. Nice ball fake again out of the backfield by Odom. And they're going to spot it. Uh, it's going to be first down for Pioneer. Believe it or not, that's their first first down in the second quarter of action. They've only got three in the game. They haven't needed first downs as they have scored twice very quickly. Well, Knightstown uh, just uh, being caught off guard by this great speed of Pioneer. And uh, rightfully so, these kids are able to move, whether it's a quarterback or the running back or that front line even. Again, Russell and Pugh out of the backfield for Pioneer. Motion to the right side. Odom's going to pass. He throws in the flat. It's intercepted by Josh Plank at the 30, and he drops it. Plank had an interception, and he dropped it. That pass was right into the hands of a wide-open Josh Plank, and I think it even surprised him. <laughs> well, Josh slapping the helmet as he was sitting on the ground. He knew that uh, he'd uh, really lost a big chance there, but... Uh, uh, he was able to uh, read that play and get in on it. Man, we needed that one. Brings up a second and ten for Pioneer on the incompletion. Clock stopped at 3.34. And again, now they'll send two wideouts to the right side in the board and also Robert Campbell. Out of the backfield is Russell. He goes in motion. The hand inside to Pew. Trap block. He's into the backfield. Knightstown 22, maybe the 21-yard line. It's going to be very, very close for the first down. He picks up at least eight. And we'll wait for the spot. He's going to be about a half a yard short of the first down, so it brings up a third and one. And that's not going to be any problem for Pioneer to pick up. No, the way they've been running that football, uh, it shouldn't be at the moment unless this Knightstown uh, defensive unit can figure out a way to put the stops on them right here. Coach Mike Johnson has got this team playing very, very well. Knightstown's defense has been in this position before. Short yardage needed. They go to Odom. He's going to turn it up, and he's got a blocker. He's got the first down, and he's going to be run out of bounds down at the Knightstown stick. 
Kate Odom on a run. He picks up nine yards, gets down to the Knifetown six. And now they'll move it back and say that he went out of bounds a little bit farther back, so they'll spot the ball on about the seven, maybe the eight. It's very close. So the first down drive will continue, and Knightstown not being able to stop this Pioneer football team. No, the speed has really got them caught off guard. These kids can fly. I don't think there's much they can do to stop it. Uh, a lot of coaches say there is no substitute for speed, and we are seeing that now. Now Pioneer will get up to the line of scrimmage, and they will call a timeout. They didn't like something that they saw, so with that, Knightstown will get a little bit of breather as they've got their back to the wall down on the seven-yard line. They'll come over to the coaching staff and try to get some words of praise to try to stop this drive and maybe come away empty-handed. Well, the Pioneer coach is hot. I don't know what happened, but I know that young man didn't want a timeout. He is mad, and he's letting that team know it over there. The bad thing about it, they put him on the diamond vision so everybody in the, in the RCA Dome can see it. Well, this thing is about uh, half filled up as far as spectators. Nobody in the upper deck. They haven't opened that up. And uh, Knightstown has brought a huge contingent, contingency of supporters. But right now they've got their back to the wall. And they are in jeopardy of going down once again by two scores. As Knightstown found themselves trailing 14 to nothing. Then finally they got things back on track after a five-yard pass from Scheiman to er, er, uh, Ian Hayes. And the point after by Plank was good to make it 14 to 7. The Pioneer threatening once again. The ball sitting on the Knightstown 8. 2.52 to play here in the half. Pioneer back out of the huddle, as are the Panthers. Again, you never know what Tate Odom, the quarterback for Pioneer, is going to do. Single setback is Pew. In the slot is number 36, Wallen. They go in motion. It goes to Odom. He turns it up, and he is hit after he gained maybe one. Nice, solid stop by Knightstown. First man to make contact was Kyle Rhodes. Also in there helping out Joe Quiz in the action. So it brings up a second and goal for Pioneer. Rhodes plugged the hole that time, but uh, Odom picked up another yard, and they just keep chipping away at that yardage little by little. Next thing you know, they turn a sweep into a huge, huge ground gainer. Second and goal from the seven. One wide out wide to the right is DeBoard. They roll to the left side. It goes to Pew, and he walks in untouched touchdown. Great ball faking once again by Odom, the quarterback for the Pioneers as a running back never had anybody around him at all. Marching in there, Mike Pugh, a senior. He's 5'8", 166 pounds. Well, now we can see why Michael Pugh is up in the upper echelon of ground gainers in the state of Indiana. He has gained over 2,000 yards, and that time they blew such a hole over that I think you and I could have gone, Lee. I think so. I know I could have made it. 20 to 7, Pioneer on top. Here's the extra point. It's up and nearly blocked by Collett, but it's going to be good. So it goes to 21 0. 21 7. Knights down again, finding themselves down by 14. Going to have to do some readjustment in the locker room. The coaching staff trying to cheer the Knights down Panthers on, trying to keep their heads up. But it is tough right now because Knights down has not found themselves in this kind of a position before. Well, they really haven't, and uh, it's tough duty out there, but if anybody can pull this game back around or at least come back and make this game uh, what it should be, uh, that's the Knightstown Panthers. you got to give your, your credit and your hat off to uh, Pioneer. They are a very, very well-coached football team. Every man knows his job, and we talked about Knightstown playing as one. So do the Pioneer Panthers. Yes, they do. These young men uh, have... Uh, come to play football today and they are fast well the play uh, the score that time went 42 yards on seven plays and they ate up two minutes and 34 seconds on the possession and it results in a six yard run by pew point after attempt is good so knights down again going to get the ball back with 211 to play and teeing it up for the third time tonight is uh, actually the fourth time or third time check it is aaron collins Brian Johnson will come in to take and receive the kickoff. Back to receive it for Knightstown, believe it or not, was James Hogan, number 83. But Johnson comes in along with Craig Ritchie. Ian Hayes still on the bench. Here's the kick right down the middle of the field. It's going to be Ryan Johnson at the 15. He fumbles the football, falls on it, and is down at the 20. 
Things not looking good for Knightstown as Johnson coughs the ball up. Looked like it might have hit off of the thigh pad and falls forward. Actually very fortunate to recover the fumble. So Knightstown will get it on the 21-yard line with 2.08 to play. Eric Scheiman taking the play back into the offensive unit as he is getting ready to go and try to get these Knightstown Panthers back on track and get the ball moving. The ball with the 21-yard line of Knightstown. Ben Brooks will come into the ball game on the offensive side of things for Knightstown now with Ian Hayes still on the bench. Brooks will line up with or as a tight end. Plank will line up as a wide out this time. Out of the backfield come Crawford along with Johnson. Long signal count. Scheinman on the handoff to Crawford. He gets across, falls forward for maybe two. Drew Crawford trying to uh, get the momentum going again as he carries the football, but immediately on the snap, the uh, defensive unit of Pioneer all over the ball carrier. Eric Forge on the stop for Pioneer. So two yards on the play by Crawford. Brings up a second and eight, down to a minute, 40 to play. Knightstown needing to strike quickly if they've got any chance of scoring here before the first half time expires. They break the huddle. This time, Plank will come wide along with Richie to the left side. Brooks will line up in the tight end position. Scheinman, long signal count, takes it, drops straight back to throw. Here's the pressure, passes in the flat, throws it into the ground. Eric Scheinman throws it right into the ground. It was intended for Ryan Johnson. He was there, but it looked like Eric Scheinman one-hopped the ball as a third baseman might do to a first baseman. So it brings up a long third and eight, and things are just not going Knightstown Panther way. Now the pressure coming in hard uh, whenever Scheiman comes out of the pocket and attempts to pass, and uh, it's going to have to be our running game, looks like to me, if we get anything going, and that's being stymied by three and four defenders at a time on the ball carrier. Interesting thing here, Robert or, uh, Jamie Wallen has got a huge soft cast on that left arm, and yet he's still playing football. Third and eight for Knightstown, passing situation. Scheiman under the center, he drops straight back, goes to a handoff, it goes to Crawford on a delay, and it's stuck. First man there to make contact, number seven, Matt Henry. So Crawford barely back to the line of scrimmage, and Knightstown's gonna have to punt the football away with a minute 11, and Pioneer will call a timeout because they think they can still score. Well, the Pioneer offensive unit uh, really uh, fast, as we have alluded to, and uh, the great, uh, Great call there by their coach as he's going to try to get things uh, turned back around here for them. Well, again, never second-guessing Coach Don Willard. I don't know that I would have done a draw play on a second and, or a third and eight that deep in my own end zone. But, again, they've got nothing to lose now. They lose two on the handoff to Crawford. So Plank's going to have to come in, and you can bet that Pioneer is going to be putting out an all-out rush to try to block this thing. And who knows, with their foot speed, it could be possible. Well, they absolutely could. Uh, if this Knightstown um, line can hold them, uh, possibly we'll get the kick off here by Josh Plank, but uh, it's going to take a lot of work up there because these young gentlemen can step right through there in a heartbeat. Well, this crowd that was so loud at the beginning of the football game has been stymied, hasn't had much to cheer about, and my guess is there's a lot of people down there that is for Knightstown that's got a huge lump in their throat right about now. All right, Plank will line up inside the 10. When he hits the ball, it should be just over the 10-yard line. Back to receive for the Pioneers is number 20, Michael Pugh. Here's the rush. Plank gets a foot into it, angles for the sideline. Pugh chases it, bounces at the 50, and takes a Pioneer bounce and will be down at the 49-yard line by Knightstown. And the first man down is Clint Butcher. Check that. That'll be Landon Collip. Had his jersey doubled up, so it will be Collip instead of Butcher. Butcher not even in the ballgame. No, sir. My mistake. So the Pioneer fans having a little bit more to cheer about than Knightstown. The weary defense comes back onto the field again, probably saying, not this again. A minute three, and you've got to watch Tate Odom. Never know what this young man's going to do with the football. He'll turn it up into a quarterback option, fake the option, turn it up, and last time he did that, he scored from 63 yards out with only 53 seconds left, or actually gone off the opening quarter clock. Here goes Odom, and again, Odom will turn it up to keep it, and he is hit as he crosses the 50 down by Rhodes and also Bonowitz. Bonowitz hitting uh, Odom head on, but uh, this kid uh, must be in terrific shape himself. Just pops right up and heads back to the huddle. Odom he picks up, uh, looks like a long three, maybe four. They'll call it second and six. 
So Knightstown's defense giving two and three up at a time, not to mention the big, big yardage. So if Knightstown can contain these small yard runs and make an adjustment at halftime, we could see an entirely different Knightstown Panthers squad in the second half. Pew the ball carrier quickly across the line of scrimmage inside Knightstown territory down to the 44, maybe to 43, and that's where they'll spot the ball, 43. So Pew picks up another four. Great example right there of the tremendous speed that they have. Pew coming through there just on a dead run after the first step. Roush on the stop for Knightstown. Third and three. Knightstown would love to keep the Pioneer squad out of the end zone and go into the halftime uh, only trailing by two scores. In motion again, Odom on a pass. He looks to the right side, got a man out in the flat, wide open, is there, he's got it, down to the night and out of bounds at the 10. Lee Franklin pulls in the pass right in front of Landon Collum. Collum very upset at himself, but nothing to be upset about as Franklin just basically ran a route and smoked Landon Collum. And he's all the way out of bounds down at the Knightstown 10. And that's what we talked about, not needing to pass, but very able. Well, yes, they are, and uh, our defense on the passing end all year has just played off a tad slow, and you can't do that at all against this unit. Pioneer looking to score one more time. They've got 20 ticks left here in the first half. They already lead 21-7. to Pioneer with a first and goal from the Knightstown 10. Hand off, no Tate. Odom wants to roll to the right side. Got a man inside, and it goes through the defender's hands. Richie and Colla both had a shot at it. It was intended for Pew. And on the incompletion, we'll stop the clock with 15 seconds left. And that time we saw that Odom has a rocket for an arm. Yes, he does. He can really let that ball go. Odom uh, very at ease out there, and rightfully so, because uh, the entire team is so fast that he's got plenty of time to look over a lot of different situations out there to see what he needs to do. As small as Knightstown is, Pioneer is the smallest team in the entire state tournament of all classes this season with only 363 people in the school. Odom takes the roll. Quarterback keeper turns to the left side. Options, it goes to number 21, and that's David Russell. He walks into the end zone, and this one's out of hand. This one is out of hand. Russell taking the ball on the option play from the quarterback and going around the left side with another great burst of speed that uh, was able to take them into the end zone virtually untouched. Well, Knightstown's going to have to do a lot of soul searching. They now trail 27-7. to And evidently, this uh, information that we had gotten about this Pioneer squad is accurate. Point after attempt is down, the kick is up, and it is good by Aaron Collins. So now it's 28-7, to and Knightstown will get the ball back with eight seconds left, and they trail by 21 points. Well, it's tough duty out there when you're facing a unit like this. Uh, uh, Knightstown is really going to have to go in at halftime and see what they can do, but uh, with this speed, that uh, the Pioneers have. It's just virtually unstoppable. The quarterback was going to the left that time and just pitched out to his running back, and he went in totally untouched into the end zone, made a cut back, and made the cut so quick that uh, just dropped a Knightstown defender in his track. Brian Johnson got suckered on the inside. He was the last hope for Knightstown, and he got suckered to the inside on the quarterback option by Odom, and Odom options the ball to the left side, and it goes right into Russell on a 10-yard score. And again, Pioneer leads 28-7. to Well, we were worried about this. We talked about how Knightstown would respond if they found themselves in a deep hole, and it doesn't get much deeper than this right now, Knightstown people. Well, no, it doesn't. But uh, again, don't count these Knightstown players out yet, folks, because they understand this football game, and if there are any adjustments that this coaching staff can make against this speed at halftime, they'll get it done, and these Knightstown players will pull it back because... They're not looking down in the mouth yet out there. This Pioneer squad went 50, 51 yards on five plays, and it only took them 55 seconds to score on the 10-yard quarterback option to Russell. And it's 28-7, to so Collins will kick off once again for Pioneer. Back to receive for Knightstown are Ryan Johnson along with Craig Ritchie. And you can't help but look at the dejected look on the Knightstown team's face, but uh, they've still got a half a football left, and now Pioneer's trying to get more with an onside kick. Ball goes out of bounds, flags will fly, so they will re-kick, this time from the 35, and Pioneer looking to uh, run this thing 
into the ground if possible. I'm sure they'd like to score as many points as possible, but Knightstown may decline the penalty and take the football with eight seconds left, or they may make them re-kick. Still waiting for the call from the sidelines. Coach Willard deciding, and uh, looks like Knightstown will decline the penalty, so they will take over. We'll see where they spot the football. It's going to be near the 35. Knightstown declines the penalty. The yeah, and that's where they'll spot it, 35-yard line. So Knightstown trailing 28-7. And this one far, far from uh, what we've seen in tournament play so far for the Knightstown squad. Well, that's right. It'll just be a go to the knee and get it into the uh, uh, locker room so that we can talk about this uh, next half coming up, I would imagine. Scheiman under center will take the snap and drop to one knee with eight seconds left. And that will round out the first quarter of action. Instead, he doesn't. He goes to Ryan Johnson. Johnson across the line of scrimmage to the 39. And that'll round out the first quarter of action, or actually first half of action. One half is in the book of the Class 1A state championship. Knightstown trails 28 to 7. Let's take a four-minute timeout, and we will be back with some unofficial halftime stats. Not pretty, but we'll go ahead and give them to you anyway. You're listening to championship action on Young Country 90.7 FM, WKPW. Knightstown trails Pioneer 28 to 7, and it has been all Pioneer here in the first half. Not too many stats to report to you other than Ryan Johnson has... Rushed the ball 15 times for 41 yards. Drew Crawford, 8 for 21. Ian Hayes, only 1 for 4, and he was injured in the second quarter. Did not see action in the remaining uh, time of the second quarter. Eric Scheiman having a very tough day from the passing standpoint. Had a lot of pressure put on him. Been forced out of the pocket. And the two passes that he did connect on uh, had pressure again. Just never saw it. Was fortunate enough to get the ball off. He has completed 1 of 6 for a total of only 15 yards. And one of those went to Craig Ritchie for 12 and Ian Hayes for 5. To give you a rundown of the scoring, 53 seconds into the first quarter of action, Pioneer struck quickly on two plays after a 63-yard run from Tate Odom. And the point after attempt failed, so they led 6-0. Five plays later, Knightstown turns the ball back over, and on a one-yard run, Odom scores with 6.09 left in the first. And they go for the two-point conversion. It was good, and Knightstown trailed 14-7. Then it looked like Knightstown was starting to mount some sort of a charge. And at the 7.55 mark of the second quarter of action, Knightstown scores on a five-yard pass from Eric Scheiman to Ian Hayes. And Josh Plank added the point after attempt, and it was 14-7. Then all of a sudden, Pioneer gets the ball back on an interception, a six-yard run by Pugh, untouched at the 2.11 in the second quarter. Point after attempt was good by Collins. And then, as the first half ended with eight seconds left, Russell on a 10-yard score from Tate Odom with eight seconds left in column at the uh, two-point attempt, and we stand at 28-7, pioneer over your Knightstown Panthers. Lee, what do we need to do? Well, we need to find a way to contain this speed, but I don't believe there's any way that we can, just due to the fact that uh, that's not uh, letting down and tucking your tail and running. That's just uh, seeing it as it is because this Offensive unit and both defensive unit of Pioneer are just extremely fast. Well, that's something we've talked about. Many coaches will will echo the sentiments that Knightstown has good foot speed, but without a doubt, Pioneer is much, much quicker than the Knightstown Panthers on this particular given day. And yep. there is no substitute for foot speed. Well, there isn't. You know, uh, uh, we've said all season, and I don't know who it was, but I can remember a coach long ago saying that, you know, there's such a thing as quickness and there's such a thing as speed, and uh, they do have the speed. We are quick. Uh, we can get a step or two on you, but uh, we do not have the terrific speed of uh, this Pioneer unit. Well, the thing about it, their leading ground gainer is Pew, Michael Pew, and uh, Pew has only got 46 yards on nine attempts, but he's averaging 5.1 per rush. And the thing about it, the leading ground gainer actually has been Tate Odom, the quarterback, as he has rushed the ball seven times for 104 yards, and he's averaging 14.9 yards per carry. Well, there's nothing you can do about uh, those type of statistics, and uh, it's just uh, great. This Pioneer team, when they run their offense, there are so many options that they can run off of it, and each man, they just move as a unit out there. They, these guys have been really drilled well. Well, that they have, and this is something Knightstown's going to have to try to contend with in the second half of action. They've got seven minutes to make an adjustment, and I'm not sure that you can make an adjustment 
in that short a time span to offset what's happening with Pioneer. Well, that possibility uh, could be true, but uh, these Knightstown uh, kids have played all year. Uh, whether they were down or up, you couldn't look at them and, and tell the difference, and they're still doing that today. They're down 28-7 at the half, and uh, they're going to go in there. They're going to try to figure things out, and they're going to try to bring this game back around, believe me. Coach Don Willard and staff will have some kind of an idea of how to offset this foot speed. Now, whether they can actually take and implement that will be something else. And we don't want to count this thing out yet. Uh, of course, this game is far from over. We still have a full half left. But don't forget, right around the corner is Knightstown Panther basketball. And we will be on the road uh, very, very shortly. Knightstown has postponed, I think, four games for sure. Well, Knightstown's going to have to tighten the belt just a little bit. I'm sure that they've made some adjustments in the locker room. But again, Hugh and Odom have been the two that, without a doubt, have dominated Knightstown. But, you know, a lot of the credit's got to go to the front line because they have blown some gaping holes for both Pugh and Odom to run around. Especially, you'd think Knightstown would have some sort of an answer for that quarterback option going around the left or right side. But as of yet, the defensive ends, and give Pioneer credit because they are getting the blocks, pushing the defensive ends inside of the football, and they need to be to the outside. And they have been... Uh, basically out technique here in the first first half of action well they really have but again it's that speed you know i know that the people at home probably got tired of hearing us say conditioning all year but they're probably going to get tired of hearing us talk about the speed of pioneer before this is over with but pioneer is able to get to the outside and turn the speed on and knightstown just cannot find a way to get to them before they've turned it up the field and started downfield well if there is a positive thing to start the second half of action knightstown will get the football and they will get the first opportunity to score. And so far, it hasn't been a very good first half. As we said, Ryan Johnson Knight leads the way with 15 half. rushes Knight for only 41 yards. And sometimes Ryan Johnson gets that on one play. So Knightstown being, being held to what they do best. And again, it looks like Pioneer has trained very, very well and watched a lot of game film. And they have cut Knightstown off at the knees. Coming over to... Richie at the 10, and he brings the ball, excuse me, uh, uh, back to the inside, then goes outside. Richie turning it upfield, now cutting back into the field again and getting the ball out to the, about the 46-yard line. 37-yard return by Craig Ritchie as Craig Ritchie just runs a beautiful route that time. Well, that'll ignite the fires in a hurry. Craig Ritchie took it and came to the right, then reversed his field direction, went back to the left, then reversed a second time and came back and almost fumbled the football. Watching the replay here, he almost lost it, and he had to cradle it. So Knightstown's got the football in good possession at uh, their 47-yard line. And Ben Brooks is going to come back in and play some tight end as Ian Hayes still on the bench. Ian down walking around, got a big cast on that foot at the moment. Looks like an air cast trying to get loose, but having his problems as Shyman starts calling the signals for this Knightstown offensive unit. Crawford on the ball carry going around the left side and picking up some valuable yardage out there for the Panthers. Looks like a pickup of about five yards that time for Drew Crawford as he took it around the left side after Eric Scheiman making a nice handoff to him and picking up about five yards on that particular play. Sickler on the stop for the Pioneer team as Knightstown once again getting ready to put the ball in play at about their 46 yard line out there. Shyman takes the snap, hands the ball off to Crawford going over the right side, busting some tackles, still digging and trying to take the ball forward and still digging and Drew Crawford just putting on a tremendous show of ball carrying ability out there as he was wrapped up but would not give up and the ball now at about the 38 and a half yard line of the Pioneers and a first down for Knightstown with a pickup of nine yards. Drew Crawford digging ahead over right tackle and picking up the valuable yardage for the Panthers. 10.57 left to play in this third quarter as Knightstown now starting to advance the ball. Scheiman getting set once again, coming out of the D formation will be the running backs as the ball is snapped and handed off to Drew Crawford, taking it over the left side and then straight ahead for another nice pickup down to the 34-yard line of the Pioneer team. So Drew Crawford coming out and picking up uh, four yards here for the Panthers and trying to set this into motion for Knightstown. Now they're giving Drew Crawford five yards on that particular carry, which is uh, very gracious of... Uh, the RCA Dome here. 
Ball on the 34-yard line of the Pioneers as Scheiman gets set once again, takes one look back at his team formation. The snap is made. A handoff made to Ryan Johnson, taking the ball up and then slashing back and down to the 22-yard line of the Pioneers. So Knightstown now trying to swing it back for the Panthers. 11-yard pickup by Ryan Johnson as he gets the ball carried over the right side and does a tremendous job out there. Two consecutive first downs for the Panthers. Nice down moving the football like they have done all season long, and now it doesn't look like Pioneer has found the answer this quarter so far. Ian Hayes still walking off the injury down here as he's trying to get back into this game. Coming out of the T formation again will be Knightstown on about the 21-yard line. Handoff to Craig Ritchie going over the left side and down to the 10-yard line of the Pioneers. So Craig Ritchie and the Knightstown Panthers starting to move this football ahead. A pickup of 12 yards for Craig Ritchie that time as he carries that ball with great authority. I don't know what Coach Don Willard and staff told these kids at the half, but I'll tell you what, they have come out and flat driven the ball right down the gut of Pioneer. Knightstown's got a first and ten, and they can still get a first down just inside the one. Still working out of that T formation. Scheiman getting set now again as the defensive unit. A little challenged out there of Pioneer. The handoff made this time to Ryan Johnson as he twists and turns his way down to the six-yard line of the Pioneers. So Ryan Johnson on a pickup of five yards out there is taking the ball to the Pioneer defensive unit. Again, Sickler makes the stop for Pioneer. Ian Hayes wanting to get back into this ball game, but he is still favoring that left ankle. And as you said, he's got an air cast on it. Ian uh, really wanting to get back in bad, just trying to walk it off, but uh, don't know whether he's going to make it or not. As Scheiman on a quick count takes the ball, and Crawford goes in for the touchdown for the Panthers. Drew Crawford going over the left side for the Knightstown Panthers, takes it in for the touchdown. So the Knightstown Panthers now coming back with a... Uh, Tremendous amount of authority and just guts out there playing away and taking it down for the touchdown. Nice to look very, very good on that drive as they kept the ball almost four minutes and Crawford scores on a six-yard run. So Josh Plank will add the point after attempt. With 8.40 here to play in the third quarter of action, Knightstown creeping back into this one just a little bit. Shyman hits is. the ball, the kick is up, and it is good. So I think that was partially blocked. Now the Knightstown Panthers... 14, the Pioneers 28 as Knightstown coming out in this second half and showing they can play. All of that coaching staff going out to meet those Knightstown Panther players as timeout is being called now on the field. You know, that's something that Knightstown has done all season long. Third quarter of action, they have taken the football after they have kicked off in the opening half and then taken it and gone right back down the field. But that has not been Knightstown's problem. Knightstown has not had the problem on the offensive side of things. Knightstown has had the problem on the defensive side of things, and they have yet to stop both Pew and Odom, along with the rest of the Pioneer squad. So we will see now if Knightstown has got enough gumption to fire this thing up, and maybe the, the quick score after they took the possession and drove down the field, cuts into it, and now only trailed by two touchdowns, 28-14. Well, I was talking with... Uh uh, Chuck Rhodes just a few minutes ago, and Chuck's seen every game that Knightstown has played for quite a few years here recently, and he said, I didn't believe that they could get around the outside of us like they're doing. He said, I, I just didn't think they could do it, but they are. So we'll see if uh, Coach Willard and uh, his staff out there and uh, uh, can get this thing turned around defensively for us. As Knightstown knows that they can play with this team, you don't get this far and not be able to play with any team. You just have to make some adjustments, and According to that last drive, which was one of the great things that they do, this uh, clock started at 12 minutes, and now it's at 8.40, and Knightstown has scored, and getting back into this game as they handily can. Well, you know, Knightstown, again, they take some time off the clock, but Knightstown, again, has got to be aware of the running game, and the people responsible for the end are Ben Brooks along with Ryan Johnson, and they, as we said, as the first half came to a close, they are getting blocked to the inside and not being able to get outside and contain the run. So the score is good by Crawford, and Knightstown gets back into this thing. They only trail by 14, 28 to 14 with 8.40 to play in the third. Kyle Rhodes getting the T set and getting the ball set up, getting ready to kick this ball off to the Pioneers. DeBoard and Odom back to receive for Pioneer. Short man for Pioneer is Russell. Here. There, it's an onside kick as uh, immediately 
It is down at the 50 by Jamie Wallen for Pioneer as they do get the ball covered and get it stopped. So it's going to be put into action at about the 49 and a half yard line or so of Pioneer. The Knightstown defensive unit coming on and getting set for the play. Again, Pioneer has started out just about every possession in excellent field possession. Yes, and this is uh, only halfway uh, the length of that field to go to score as Tate Odom brings the offensive unit for the Pioneers up and gets set. Long count as we have a man in motion. Handoff to the first man through, and the Knightstown defensive unit puts the stops on him for a no-go that time. Pew picking up about a half a yard for Pioneer. Crawford in on the stop for Knightstown. Second tackle of the day for Drew Crawford as the Knightstown defensive unit now trying to put the halts to this Pioneer offensive move. Second and 10 for the Pioneers with 8.09 left to play in this third quarter of action. Odom putting the ball in the hands of the first man through Pew who is hit and picks up approximately five yards on the carry that time for the Pioneers. Craig Ritchie, the first man in to make the stop. That's his third tackle on the day. And Craig Ritchie able to grab the Pioneer defense or offensive unit, but not until after they picked up some valuable yardage. Again, on that first step, we are facing a third and four situation here for the Pioneers. Big, big defensive play now for the Knightstown Panthers as they need to put the stops on this Pioneer unit. Hand off to the first man through. Pew, who picks up the yard, jumps one of the secondary and almost breaks it wide open had it not been for Kyle Rhodes putting the stops to him. A first down for Pioneer, a pickup of six yards. Mike Pew on the carry that time, jumped uh, one of the men in the secondary, and then thankfully Kyle Rhodes getting in on the stop. The ball now at the 39-yard line excuse me, 34-yard line of Knightstown. Tate Odom. Got one wide, wide receiver to the left, man in motion to the right. Hand off to the second man, three. Russell, as he finds open territory, takes off and sees daylight, but is finally brought down by three of the Knightstown players. Bonowitz, Collip, and... Ryan Johnson on the stop, but a 24-yard pickup by David Russell for the Pioneer Panthers as they march to the goal line. Well, that's just execution of a, a very, very well-handed uh, ball by Odom. Russell running on a counter play to the left, and Odom going right. And again, Knightstown not catching on until it was 22 yards late. Tate Odom once again uh, having a man go in motion to hand it off to the second man through as he is digging and gets the touchdown for the Pioneers. So the Pioneers going up with Pew on the carry of the ball, 34-14 over these nice town Panthers. Well, I don't know if there's an answer here or not, Lee. Knights Town comes out and starts out with an excellent drive to get back on the scoreboard. Then all of a sudden, Pioneer answers and they can score about as quickly as anybody I've ever seen in high school sports. Well, they absolutely can. This, uh, this uh, Pioneer unit is uh, really tough as the extra point is getting ready. The snap is down. It's up, and it looks to be good. So Pioneer goes up 35-14 over the Knightstown Panthers with 6.35 left to play in this third quarter of action. Well, what do you do? You make an adjustment, you score, you come right out, and they score. It's just like if this had been the opening quarter and we've been trading touchdowns, Knightstown's in this ball game. but when you find yourself down 35-14, you know, it's an uphill climb the whole way. Well, it absolutely is, and Pioneer came out and immediately put two scores on the uh, board against the Knightstown Panthers, and uh, we knew from that opening play uh, on that run by Odom, uh, that it was going to be a long afternoon trying to catch that young man, and this entire Pioneer team is very, very fast. Now it's a 51-yard drive by Pioneer, and they punch it into the end zone with guess who? Nobody else but Mr. Pugh, and Pioneer leads Knightstown 35-14 here in the third quarter with 6.35 to play, and Knightstown uh, has really, really got a huge hole to dig out of here. With the coaching staff down there trying to get this Knightstown team turned around as Coach Willard 
and Stanley talking to the team and uh, letting them know what they have to do and uh, Knightstown trying very hard to get back into this game but after uh, coming out and scoring immediately and then Pioneer coming back and scoring at will it's uh, very tough to do. Well Knightstown cannot afford to trade touchdowns with Pioneer they're already up by 21 points that's three touchdowns any way you divide it you do the math. Knightstown has got to score and then get a couple of stops here and we're still keeping an eye on Ian Hayes, and it doesn't look like Ian's going to get back into the ball game. Well, Ian's still walking out there on that uh, foot and walking pretty good now, but uh, no, he's not feeling well at all because he wouldn't have taken himself out of that game earlier on. We just got confirmation from the sidelines that Ian Hayes will not get back into the ball game, So he is out. So Hayes uh, done for the afternoon. He only carried the ball one time for four yards, so a very short afternoon for Ian Hayes. So... Once again, the Pioneer unit uh, ready to send the ball down to Knightstown. Back we've got Craig Ritchie and Ryan Johnson waiting to receive the football. A long hold here by the umpires and referees as now we go into action. The kick is up, going over to Craig Ritchie at the 10. Uh, almost a little bit of a bobble there at the 20. Now at the 30. Now at the 40. One man to beat. Craig Ritchie could go, but he has to cut back, and he is brought down at the 35-yard line. Well, um, Craig Pioneer. Ritchie almost popped one. But the only man that he had to beat, believe it or not, was number 14 quarterback Tate Odom. And as fast as Craig Ritchie is, you're not going to outrun Odom. I, I almost expected Tate Odom to come in up here and bring us a sandwich at halftime, but he didn't. Uh, Tate Odom really playing great football for Pioneer out there as Craig Ritchie brings the ball back a long way for the Knightstown Panthers. The ball on the 35-yard line of Pioneer as Knightstown gets ready to put the ball in play after a 65-yard return by Craig Ritchie. Coming out of the backfield now is Craig Ritchie. Handoff goes to Crawford as he bulls ahead for about three yards. And again, this great speed of Pioneer collapsing five players in on Drew Crawford and bringing him down. Well, I think you hit it right on the head when you said that Knightstown has got the size. But when you get three and four and five people on yourself uh, as they now take a close-up of Ian Hayes' cast as he walks on the sideline trying to run it off but uh, without a doubt a noticeable limp. Uh, Knightstown again trying to come out and had good, good, good luck out of that T formation so we'll see if they stay with it. Richie in the slot this time as the count continues with Johnson carrying the ball around the right side, cutting back inside and taking the ball down to the 20-yard line of Pioneer. So Ryan Johnson uh, on a nice carry again for the Panthers, picking up 12 yards. But the question is, is it too late with uh, 5.33 left to play in this third quarter and Pioneer up 35-14? I think this Knightstown unit can bring this ball game back. Well, I think they can if, they can, if the defense can hold the Pioneer offensive squad, but that's yet to happen. Pioneer has only been has only punted one time, and that's all they've needed. They only had the ball eight minutes in the first quarter, or first half of action. Coming out of a T formation now as Scheiman calls the signals. Long count this time again as Crawford is on the ball carry and is caught immediately at the 15-yard line by three of the Pioneer players, picking up four yards that time. Drew Crawford taking the ball straight ahead on the first man through over the left tackle. Uh, now Nice Town looking good on two consecutive drives. As you said, though, we're not able to stop Pioneer when they've got the football, and that's been the problem and the nemesis for the Knightstown Panthers here in the ballgame. We've never seen a team uh, this year with the great speed that Pioneer has, and it's really uh, showing up against this Knightstown defensive unit as the offense now trying to move the ball forward. Scheiman coming out with a handoff to Johnson uh, and is hit at the line of scrimmage. So... With 4.29 and counting left to play in this third quarter, we have a third and five situation facing the Panthers. The ball is at about the 14 and a half yard line. You know, the Knightstown fans and the football team's slogan has been, we believe, and we will see if that's something that can carry over. We've said that Knightstown, we thought, was destined to win, but Pioneer is definitely standing in the way. Well, Pioneer is uh, a team that has come to play, and uh, just as Knightstown has, and that great speed that they have is uh, really uh, something else when you uh, take a look at it and uh, see that in action. Well, Knightstown burns a timeout. Drew Crawford very upset with Eric Simon as he pushed him in the back that time and told him to get up to the line of scrimmage. And I don't know if the play clock had run down or if... Uh, 
Scheinman saw something that didn't quite uh, set with him because it looked like Knightstown was a little bit disoriented in how to set their their offensive lineup. Both Crawford, or not Crawford, but Plank and Richie went to the same side. Scheinman saw it and immediately called a timeout. So they will come over and talk to Coach Don Willard and crew and try to get this thing worked out as Ian Hayes continues to run on the sidelines. Ian Hayes wants to get back in this game so bad. He's down there trying to cut uh, right and left and uh, stutter stepping everything else, trying to get this uh, uh, ankle or foot injury uh, taken care of so that he can get back in this ball game and play. 3.57 left in this third quarter. Knights down 14, Pioneer 35. Also, Class 2A will be played tonight. The Jimtown Jimmies will take on the Clarksville, I forgot what they are, the Generals? I, I don't know. That's Class 2A, though, immediately following this ball game, so we've got to get up and pack out of here as quickly as possible. Hopefully, we will be down on the field for a Knightstown victory, but things are looking just a little bit grave at the moment. Knightstown uh, now coming out of this timeout and back out on the field as we have a third and five situation here facing the Panthers as the ball is at the 14 and a half yard line of Pioneer. Coming up to the line now. Richie out of the slot to the left as Scheiman calling the signals. Drew Crawford, the first back, Johnson the second, handoff. It's a fake and it is a pass out into the right flat and it is incomplete. So Scheiman. Again, getting uh, great pressure from the uh, defensive unit of Pioneer. Rolled to the right and threw a floater, floater pass out to the right area and uh, was unable to complete the play. Well, who else in the backfield but Tate Odom for Pioneer as he flushed Scheiman out of the pocket. Brooks made an attempt to catch the pass but was way, way out of bounds. Even if he had come down to the football, he wouldn't have uh, been in bounds, so they would have called it an incompletion. So it brings up a fourth and five for Knightstown. They've got to get to the Pioneer 10 to continue the drive. Knightstown going for it now as they come out uh, working uh, with two uh, receivers out to the right in Plank and Ritchie as Johnson has the ball. One man to beat. Beats him and Ryan Johnson going in for the score for the Knightstown Panthers. Touchdown, Ryan Johnson. Great fake play again by Eric Scheiman as looked like he was rolling out the pass, handed off with his right hand to Ryan Johnson over the left side, and Knightstown in for the touchdown. Ryan Johnson gets the 15-yard score. Knightstown creeps just a little bit closer. Now they trail 35-20, and Johnson good open field running as he ran by all the defenders, and that time we saw Ryan Johnson put on some speed, and he actually outran the defenders. Nick Williams, the only man who had a chance at Ryan Johnson at 5'11", 154 pounds, and Ryan just blew him away. The snap is made for the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. So the Knightstown Panthers right back again. Well, Pioneer 35, Knightstown 21. This is what we said. Knightstown cannot afford to trade scores with Pioneer. We need a big stop right now. 35-21, Knightstown is in this thing, but uh, they've still got two scores to catch up. So Knightstown's got plenty of time. They've got an entire quarter. They've got three minutes and 52 seconds left here. So Knightstown again on the losing end. But uh, I think momentum may have swung just a little bit. It seems like it swings until Pioneer scores and Pugh gets a 40-yard run, doesn't it? Well, it absolutely does. You know, I've seen that work on some of those other uh, uh, programs uh, when I'm uh, doing my channel surfing a lot. You'll see them. They'll tell them to to come up and touch that TV set. Well, I think these folks ought to touch that radio a little bit and see if we can get this Knightstown defensive unit going here. You know what you get if you separate Michael or Pugh's last name? What? P-U. Oh, P-U. <laughs> P-U. Uh -oh. Boy, does that stink. Well, doesn't it, though? Yeah, I feel like I had an odor about it. Or is that a cinnamon roll I smelled? Odor, I thought Speaking it was of that, we haven't eaten today either, have No, we? we haven't, and I'm very hungry. I'm very disappointed, too. Normally, the Dome has food. Well, uh, they've got... You know, they hit it out here. They, they hit it. They've got the coffee out there. Well, I don't want anything coffee deep. doesn't sit. <laughs> they have <laughs> something you chew on. They do buddy. have a bathroom close, though. We like that. Yes, they do. Rose. And they have all you can drink. That's for sure. Will Knightstown try the onside kick by Rhodes once again? Last time we tried it, they tried to do the old switcheroo. No, I think Kyle's going to kick it away this time as he's getting set right now. Bonowitz gives everybody the go-ahead. Rhodes on uh, the low kick going into the secondary, and the ball is bounding out of bounds at about the... Uh, uh, 12-yard line or so it looked like, I think. It may have went out earlier than that, but anyway, the ball's going to be called back. And Knightstown. Yeah, they're going to have to re-kick this one because I'm sure Pioneer, although 
they could probably take the ball from end zone to end zone without any difficulty, but they are going to make Knightstown re-kick the football, I think. I don't believe so, because uh, this young man coming off the field here has a kicking tee in his hand, so... And look where they're going to spot the football, all the way up to the Illegal procedure penalty. Pioneer 35, and the ball went out at the 12. Now, can you explain that one to me? Well, it was an illegal procedure penalty against the Panthers, so the ball is being placed at the 35-yard line of Pioneer. So let's see if this Knightstown defensive unit can get this turned around and get Pioneer stopped on this particular drive. 3.52 left to play in the third quarter as Odom sends a man in motion to his right. Long signal count. Again, handoff to... Odom on the ball carry, and he is taken down by Richie and Plank. Richie and Plank in quickly on the play that time as Odom unable to turn the ball to his right and take it upfield. There's a name we haven't heard a lot of tonight, and uh, that's been Josh Plank. Been very quiet, and he has been blocked well all night long as Coach Don Willard looks down the sidelines and looks at the clock. There's 326 and counting here the third. The Knightstown defensive unit already set and awaiting this next play as Odom calling instructions to the left wide out is debord as the handoff is made to pew and takes it right straight up the center is hit by landon collett but then uh, afterwards is smoked by craig ritchie who took him down immediately that's the hardest hit we've seen in the afternoon we talked about nice down if they had a chance they were going to have to hit pioneer very hard that's the hardest hit of the afternoon from either squad the ball at the 43 and a half yard line of the pioneers as the Knightstown Panthers with facing a third and one situation here on the defensive end. Odom calls the signals, hands off to Pew who trails ahead and I don't know if he got it or not because it's very close out there. Indication from Kyle Rhodes is no way. So he is stopped. He did pick up maybe a half yard and it looks like they're giving that to him over there although they indicated initially it was no gain. No. So the Knightstown defensive unit uh, going to have to dig in hard here, and this could really swing some things. That's the first time they've stopped Pew all afternoon. All afternoon. So Knightstown's going to have to really get on things right here. Fourth and one. Fourth and one situation now as Odom looks out again to his left. Long looks over here as he sets a man in motion, tries to drive the ball ahead, and I believe they pick up the first down out there. Tate Odom on the sneak, and immediately the chains are dropped, and they're coming down set for the first down. That's only the second first down for Pioneer here in the third quarter. Ball on the 44, 45 and a half yard line of Pioneer, as they are once again starting a first down situation here with 156 and counting in this third quarter. Knightstown defensive unit. Uh, trying to get set up against Pioneer here as they have a wide out to the right going out to cover that Bonowitz handoff to the second man through and he is stopped in his track great stop that time by Knightstown as Jason Chapman coming in and putting the hit on Pew his second tackle of the afternoon Chapman hitting and hitting hard low on the legs of Pew to just stop him dead in the tracks so we have a second and ten situation Facing Pioneer here as the Knightstown defensive unit trying to get back into this and uh, get Pioneer stopped. Odom now getting things set up once again. Sets a man in motion to the left. Hand off to Pew, the first man through. Pew breaks it open and he is on his way to the races as Pew has one man to beat and could get in and is hit finally from behind but not until the ball is at the five-yard line of Knightstown. Pew on the carry. Jason Chapman down to make the stop, but not until after a great yard yardage pickup by Pew for the Pioneers. Pull 40 yards on the pickup that time. Can you tell me, well, now they say it's 49 yards. It's closer to 50. Can you tell me how he broke through five defenders? Well, once again, I think it's that great speed. They had hands on him, but, man, you just can't. You can't pull him down by the shirt. And Ryan Johnson was on his heel. Odom calling the signals out with the ball at the five-yard line of Knightstown. Hands off to Pew, and they have another touchdown. So the Pioneers go up against Knightstown 41-21 with 34 seconds left in this third quarter. And it's become a long afternoon for Knightstown and an uphill battle all the way as they are unable to contain this great speed of the Pioneer Panthers. Knightstown has not been able to stop 
one can set only one drive the entire afternoon by Pioneer. Coming out and getting set for the extra point now. 72. Again, 34 seconds left to play in this third quarter. Kyle Rhodes trying to get them to pull off side. Doesn't happen. Kick is up and it is good. So the Pioneers go up 42-21 over the Knightstown Panthers with 34 seconds left to play in this third quarter of action. Knightstown just unable to control this great speed of the Pioneer Panthers as now the Knightstown defensive unit looking very haggard and very tired yep. trying to keep up with this speed of the Pioneers and it just doesn't seem to be able to happen. Now, unfortunately, this is one of those times when Knightstown, unfortunately, has not flexed. I think the defense has just flat out broken because Pew has just shredded Knightstown. And that's the third score on the afternoon from Pew. He's run from six yards. He's also scored from eight. They scored from five yards, but setting those up are long runs like that last one of 49 yards. And Knightstown, again, although Ryan Johnson was right on his heels in closing, and Chapman came all the way back from the line of scrimmage and caught Pew from behind, and how he did it, I don't know. I don't know how Jason Chapman got back there because all that took was just great guts because this uh, Pew kid can just flat fly, and Jason Chapman... Uh, uh, pulling away from that line and catching up to him. Uh, great, great work by Jason Chapman. Well, scores 42-21. Knightstown's going to have to continue to try to climb this uphill battle that they've got in front of them or the season will be over and they will fall one game short of where they had set some very lofty goals. But again, they don't want to end it on a bad note, but they have run into a buzzsaw of a team, and of course that being the Pioneer Panthers. And Back to receive, it looks Ritchie. like we've got Craig Ritchie and I believe uh, Adam Bonowitz for the Knightstown Panthers as uh, we're getting ready to put this ball in play once again as Pioneer is getting ready to kick off. 34 seconds left to play in this third quarter and Pioneer up 42-21. Kick comes to Craig Ritchie at the 15. He cuts left, uh, stutters, then goes left hard and is trying to break it open but is finally caught at the 36-yard line of Knightstown. Richie's had a big, big afternoon as he's got a 30-yard, 31-yard return. And uh, he outrun ran Pew that time. Well, he absolutely did. Uh, Craig got it turned on, and uh, if he hadn't have had to have taken that stutter step, might have broke it open for more yardage, but he had to to uh, fake one of the defenders and then took it back to the left. But Knightstown, nevertheless, is going to put the ball in play at the 36-and-a-half-yard line of Knightstown with 24 seconds left to play in this third quarter of action. Coming out of the T formation is Knightstown as Eric Scheiman calling the signals. Long count by Eric, snap is made, handoff is made to Drew Crawford who pulls ahead to the 39 yard line, or excuse me, 41 yard line of the Knightstown Panthers. Gain of four yards for Drew Crawford that time as once Drew was hit and down on the ground, uh, another Knightstown player came in on top of him and just flat snapped his head back, but Drew up immediately and ready to play. Well, you know, Knightstown hasn't had any problem moving the football as the third quarter comes to a close. Panthers trail 42-21. The problem has been on the defensive side of things. And that's so ironic that Knightstown has given up 42 points as they haven't even been tested all season long. And here it is, 42-21. Well, that's absolutely right. Knightstown hasn't had a problem in moving the ball, but this uh, this Pioneer unit's so quick they can score on you right away. And when you can when you have that tight speed, scoring doesn't seem to be a problem once you get it break it open. Yeah, and it's not just that the technique that they are using up front. They are very very well disciplined. Everybody's on the same page. They remind me a lot of a West Washington team that beat Knightstown many many years ago. Actually, only three years ago down at West Washington. And I said after the opening snap. This team is for real because everybody knew exactly what they needed to do. There was no wasted motion, no wasted effort, and that's exactly what Pioneer has done to Knightstown this afternoon as they have had this game pretty much their own way. Well, they really have. Uh, uh, the Odom to Pew uh, connection has really worked and worked well for this uh, Pioneer Panther unit as uh, they are able to uh, pick up yardage and touchdowns at will. Well, Pioneer may be 12 minutes away from their very first ever state championship, and Knightstown may have been ever so close as we are getting ready to set up the fourth and final period of play between two Panther squads that have put it all on the line 
And so far to date, it has been the Panthers from Pioneer that's been the better of the two teams. Well, you know, the thing that we can't forget either is the Knightstown Panthers have had a terrific season, and they have really put together some, some really great football for us this year. And win or lose, I do know that there's going to be uh, some big things happening back in Knightstown this evening when these, uh, when these Knightstown Panthers get home. So uh, those of you at home listening, uh, keep your ear to the ground. And when these guys get back, let's bring them back, win or lose, as they should. Well, I think there's a pep rally at 8 o'clock tonight at the high school gym, win or lose. And, again, they have had a great, great season. Let's not count them out yet, but uh, let's come out and support the team, at least tell them that we've enjoyed listening and watching them play this season because that means a lot to these young men. So here with this fourth quarter and 12 minutes left to go as Knightstown gets ready to put the ball in action at their 40-yard line. Shyman back to pass, looking long. Looked like his hand might have been hit or his arm was hit, uh, and it was intended for Craig Ritchie and just fell short. Shaman not having anything on that pass, and again, it may have been tipped. Um, Knightstown play calling has passed six times for 37 runs, and uh, actually have passed the ball six times and have had 37 run attempts here in the ball game. And without a doubt, they, the bread and butter has been the run, but it just hasn't been there today. Well, it has not, as Eric Shaman takes uh, the play back out to the Knightstown offensive unit. And 11.55 in this fourth quarter, and Knightstown 21, Pioneer 42. Shyman calling the signals out of a full backfield set. We had a fumble there by the ball carrier, Craig Ritchie, and Pioneer recovers the ball at their 40-yard line. Well, this could be adding... The Knightstown 40, excuse me. This could be the uh, adding salt to the wound right here. This could be the dagger through the heart if Pioneer scores here. Knightstown's not going to have much of an opportunity as Richie never had the handle on the football, and it bounced right into the open hands of number 21, David Russell. So Pioneer will get a chance to put even more points on the board, and that's not exactly what we need. Well, no, it's not. The ball is at the 44-and-a-half-yard line of Knightstown as the Pioneer unit getting ready to set this back into motion as Odom comes up, takes long looks uh, right and left. He has a man in motion, hands off to Pugh, the first man through. Pugh on his way to another touchdown. And the Pioneer Panthers score again against the Knightstown Panthers on a 43-yard run over the left side after a handoff from Odom to Pew. Pew just busting through that line on one quick step, and he was off to the races. Nobody around from Knightstown to stop him as he took it through the line. So Knightstown now really in a situation down 48-21 against these Pioneer Panthers with 11.41 left to play in this quarter as the Pioneers get ready to put this ball up into the uprights for the extra point. Snap is made, the ball is down, and we have flags everywhere. So must have been a procedure penalty of some type out there as flags came from both the front and the back. Procedure call against the Pioneers, and that's going to move the ball back for them a little bit. So we're going to have a five-yard penalty against Pioneer as they will now have to kick from a little further out. Seems like the ball is going to be down at about the 15-yard line. As Aaron Collins gets ready to make the extra point attempt, the ball is down, the kick is up, and... Looks like the kick was good, and we have a flag on the play, and I'm sure it was probably roughing the passer. So the Knightstown... Hey, you know what that's going to be? That's going to be a personal foul against Josh Plank as he went in there and leveled Collins, the place kicker. And Knightstown now starting to show just a little bit of frustration. That's really the first that we've seen all season, but this one, uh, this one is academic from here on out. Knightstown down to these Pioneers, 49-21 with 11.41 left to play in the fourth quarter. And just a terrific amount of speed from this Pioneer unit as both offense and defense can run like the wind out there. I, I don't remember ever seeing a team with this much speed in high school. I've talked about West Washington in the past. They were actually probably one of the best teams I've ever seen. But this Pioneer team has definitely taken the cake because... Uh, these young men have come to play, and unless a miracle happens and the floodgates open up, 
Pioneer is going to go home with a state championship. Well, you're absolutely right as uh, the Knightstown uh, team uh, trying uh, very, very hard to uh, handle this uh, running game of Pioneer, but that speed, uh, just no match for our defensive unit. They can, they can just take the ball and run at will around the right or left side of the Knightstown defensive line and take it in for the touchdown or go right over center. Yards, so a 15-yard personal foul penalty against the Knightstown Panthers the on this kick kickoff. That's a, that's a field goal. That's a field goal for Collins. Number 11 and 16, Richie. Well, the personal foul came from Josh Plank leveling Collins on the point after attempt after the Pew score. And Pew has just set a Class 1A record scoring seven times in uh, the championship game. Kick is up and it is coming down and it was bobbled and now is in the hands of one of the nice down players. I couldn't even get the number out there. And like it's Josh Plank. Down at the 12 yard line. So Josh Plank, that's absolutely right, catches the ball after it uh, bounces out of one of the uh, receivers in the secondary. And the ball now at the 12 yard line of Knightstown. Well, what do you do? It's been a long day, it's boy. Been a long day. Facing is right. this, uh, this great speed of Pioneer for Knightstown. But again, don't forget, these, uh, these kids have played a great season and have brought it this far, uh, farther than anybody has come uh, for a long time in our county in exactly. the football realm. So nothing to sneeze at here. And when you get this far along, you're playing tough competition. Shyman calling the signals now. Snap is made. Handoff to Brian Johnson taking Boy, it over to the right Ryan side. Johnson. And Ryan Johnson picking up three yards for the Knightstown Panthers. 11-27 and counting on the clock. Well, boy, I don't know. I don't have a solution. I just don't have a solution. Well, you know, there aren't any excuses to be made, really. The, the Knightstown uh, uh, defensive unit uh, just could not handle the speed of the Pioneers. And just like Chuck Rhodes and I were talking at halftime, it was just unbelievable. We haven't faced anything like that all season. And uh, when you haven't, what do you do about it? There isn't right. too much you can do as the ball is handed off to Drew Crawford, bringing it over the left side, and Drew picking up two to three yards out there on the carry. Well, you still got to give a lot of credit to a lot of fans that have come out to support Knightstown. I've seen people here from all schools, including some of the Muncie schools, Rushville schools, and it's just to the point that they have really, really supported Knightstown. And uh, Knightstown's got to be very, very happy with the way they've played, maybe not in this game, but they've got to be happy with the way that they've played this season. Well, they really do have to because uh, they have uh, brought uh, the community together as a whole, and uh, it's just really meant a lot to both the community and the school and the team to have this type of situation happen here as Knightstown getting ready to put the ball into action again as Shyman hands off to Ryan Johnson going over the right side, and Ryan Johnson carrying the ball and carrying it very well out there still for the Knightstown Panthers. Looks like the ball is going to be placed at about the 22-yard line of Knightstown, enough for the first down. So Ryan Johnson still playing as he has all year along with the rest of those Panthers. They're doing the best that they can, but they're against a very formidable opponent here in Pioneer and their great speed. Well, speed, again, there is no substitute for speed. Pioneer has shown that, and without a doubt, they deserve to be state champs the way they played. Eric Scheiman getting ready once again to put the ball into motion for Knights down, calling the signals as the defensive unit trying to get set quickly, and the handoff to Drew Crawford going through the right side, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Pioneer. I would have never guessed, and we talked about it in the very preset, that uh, if Knightstown's defense couldn't top. stop the running of Pew and Odom, that this one would be out of hand. That's exactly what's happened. Drew Crawford being helped up by one of the officials there, and I believe Drew really took a hit that time, but is uh, still staying in the game as uh, the clock again is running with 9-10 and counting, and this the last quarter of the game with Pioneer up 49, Knightstown 21. Eric Scheiman trying to get things going out there as Craig Ritchie goes wide to the right. Signals being called now by Scheiman. 
Scheiman rolling wide to the left, looking for a receiver. Now tucks it under and tries to take it upfield, brings it up to about the 28-yard line of Knightstown before being knocked out of bounds. Scheiman wanted to get his name in the rushing book, and that he did. <laughs> Eric Scheiman been able to do that all year, and sometimes more successful than on that particular carry, carrying the ball that time for the Panthers. Well, I don't know about you. Don't hold this against me, but I'm not going to keep stats anymore. <laughs> Don't think we need it, do you? No, we don't because we have uh, elementary. We have seen a situation here today where great speed can accomplish many things as this lightweight pioneer team in the weight department has been able to just outrun the Knightstown Panthers. Scheiman calling the signals. Back looking to his left, throws to Drew Crawford. Drew has the ball on the reception and takes the ball up to about the 31-yard line off Knightstown. Should be enough for the first down as Drew Crawford on a nice reception there. Just a pass over to the flat area. Brings the ball forward. Yeah, I don't mean this in any derogatory term, but uh, unfortunately the Knightstown Panthers were just outclassed today because this is a one step up than what we have seen. We thought Linton was tough. We thought Clinton Central was tough. But the Pioneer Panthers... Uh, and a lot of people question how tough a schedule Knightstown had played if they could contend with Pioneer. And here's your answer, but Knightstown has nothing to be ashamed of. Well, you're absolutely right, and I'm not sure the schedule had anything to do with it. The speed is awesome by the Pioneer unit. Drew Crawford uh, on the, the handoff uh, trying to pick up the first down, and they Crawford on the may stop. possibly have not Ronald gotten it. I'm Rutherford. sure that they may have to uh, 44, bring the chains out to... Uh, to uh, see what's going to happen. Short. So Pioneer is going to be taking over the football at about their 32-yard line, looks like. And if that's the case, uh, you know Pioneer is going to go for another score, but they're going to be short by about a half a yard if they have spotted the ball. Now the officials conferring, and they're looking, and uh, they're going to say Pioneer football. Yep, he was short by a good half yard. I don't know what they delayed on. And that brings a cheer from the Pioneer fans. Well, he's absolutely right. 8.35 left to play in this fourth quarter and plenty of time left as we have seen by this Pioneer unit to be able to uh, possibly take it down and once again score against the Knightstown Panthers. You know, Knightstown just haven't had the defensive stand that we're accustomed to seeing and it has come back to haunt them tonight. But again, it's not all Knightstown's fault as... Pioneer has got, without a doubt, the quickest 1A team and possibly one of the best football teams in Class 1, 2, or 3A. Odom calling the signal, sends a man in motion to the left, handoff to Pugh, going straight up the center and is stopped, but not until after a pickup of about three yards on the carry. Pugh just uh, immediately upon uh, getting into motion is at full speed after one step. Well, they talked about him hitting the line before the lineman actually had a chance to get to their blocking formations and he is so quick that I would think that he pushes the linemen to improve on their job because otherwise he wouldn't have these huge holes so these, <laughs> these linemen have to be just as quick well when he's standing on your heels it's time to get out of his way because this young man can really fly as Odom once again gets everything set as a man in motion to the left hands off once again to Pew who is caught Number 20, Pew. and there's a flag on the field looks like it possibly be a late hit called against the Knightstown Panthers Jim Carmichael, penalty flag down. Looks like the call is going to be, yes, personal foul against yep. Knightstown. Carmichael hit Pew after he was already on the ground, and again, that's frustration. Yes, it is. A five-yard As play. As a penalty now being marked off against Knightstown, looks like it's going to be a half the distance to the goal line. As you can probably hear there, it's going to be on the 12-yard line of Knightstown and a first down Pioneer. And you know what? This is not good. No, it isn't. Because you know Pioneer, they've broken 50 twice this year. They're wanting to break 50 one more time. And unless a miracle happens here with 7.45 to play, Pugh's going to walk into the end zone again. Odom once again getting... The offensive unit ready to go, a man in motion to the right, and Odom coming around to pass out into the flat, Intercepted. and the ball is intercepted. Drew Crawford. Drew Crawford on the interception for the Knightstown Panthers, so Knightstown will get the ball in play at their 20-yard line. Well, that's a, that's a bright spot. Crawford had good hands that time. Looked like possibly coming out of the backfield as a receiver. 
Well, the Knightstown Panthers, as they have all year, staying in the ball game and not not giving up and dying out as Pioneer really putting the points on the scoreboard. Look who's coming back into the ball game. They said he wouldn't be back. I'll be back. Well, let me tell you something. Ian Hayes has been walking and working the entire, uh, for a half virtually, trying to get this ankle loosened up, and he's back into the ball game. Uh, it's uh, just a, a great, great sign of uh, one of the Knightstown players not wanting to give up being this far down. Most kids wouldn't want to get back in, but Ian Hayes back in the action now. As Ryan Johnson on the carry for the Panthers, bringing it over the left side and breaking two tackles and finally being brought down at the 24-yard line of Knightstown. Johnson's good second effort that time as he just refused to go down. We've got an injured pioneer that hasn't even moved yet. Looked like he might have had the wind knocked out of him. And he is still flat on his back. He's moving those arms down there. I'm sure that that's what it was. Uh, he took one and uh, knocked all the air out as uh, they're coming over to check him out now. Well, even as the Panthers trail 49-21, Knightstown still will put a pop on you, even on the offensive line. They will flat put the helmet between the numbers. And as we have said all season long, there is no quit in this team. Well, there absolutely is not. Knightstown uh, knew how they got here. They got here by hard, tough play, and uh, they're still maintaining that. And I'm sure that uh, in that senior group out there, even though they know that the Josh handwriting is on the wall, they're not going to give up and stop yet. Josh Sickler, number 77, is the injured pioneer. And the entire coaching staff now out to see if they can assist with him. They've got the helmet off, and he still has not moved off of his back. So it could be something more than just a wind problem. Well, they absolutely could. Looks like they might be looking at one of the legs. I can't tell for sure, but uh, it looks like it could be a big problem. As uh, one of the nice things here, uh, you know, it's the biggest shopping day of the year, and a lot of these Knightstown fans could have bailed out and hit the road, but this pretty full down here yeah, still. Yeah, not too many people have left, but Knightstown, again, not going to win this when they trail 49-21. They're going to end the season on a 14-1 and record, and Pioneer will go to 15-0, and the first school to ever do that, and that's one of those that you can put into the record books. Well, they've got the young man up and helping him off the field, and he's got one leg cradled underneath him. He's not trying to put that down at all, so I'm sure it's uh, some type of an ankle or knee injury, probably. It does look like it's a right leg or right ankle one. Knightstown still hitting and blocking very, very well and uh, getting over some hills that uh, they didn't get over the first first half, but it's come a little too late, I'm afraid. The Knightstown Panthers uh, finding out uh, what uh, real speed is this afternoon as they have not faced anything like this at all during the entire year. Um, this is the best, uh, best well-rounded team that we have faced all year in the respect of them playing as a complete unit, I believe. Yeah, without a doubt. As far as conditioning, as far as team speed, overall agility, uh, running of plays, the ball faking in the back, it has all been something that... Uh, has come to the forefront for Pioneer, and it's going to benefit them because they're going to get out of here with a win. Out of doubt, as far as conditioning, as far as team speed, overall agility, uh, running of plays, the ball faking in the back, it has all been something that uh, has come to the forefront for Pioneer, and it's going to benefit them because they're going to get out of here with a win. 7-11 left in this uh fourth quarter and the clock starting to tick down now as Pioneer up 49-21 against the Knightstown Panthers. And the thing is, they're going to put this huge trophy in the showcase. Scheiman getting set now, received, handing off the ball to Drew Crawford, bringing it around the left side. Drew Crawford still digging, finally knocked out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Drew Crawford uh, on the carry that time, taking a couple of the Pioneer players with him, but finally the weight got too much for both of them and took him down. Crawford gets the first down as Drew gets 20 more on the night. First and 10 for Knightstown at the Knightstown 43-yard line with 6.50 to play. And uh, really today we've seen no uh, uh, emotion from this Pioneer team other than just uh, playing hard-nosed football like they have also. So uh, no show-off attitude no. at all in this unit. They're just come to do what Knightstown always does, and that's play the game. Scheiman getting ready to call the signals. The ball at the 42 a handoff uh, in the backfield and a fumble uh, that time. Don't know who picked it up, but uh, a fumble out there by the Knightstown oh, player. 
Crawford. I believe Crawford probably recovered it. I'll stop. tell you what, Michael Pugh not only you talk about speed. a conditioning of an athlete, Michael Pugh plays both ways, not just an offense, but also on defense as he plays an outside linebacker or defensive end, depending upon what the need is. Sometimes he moves up to the line of scrimmage. Sometimes he falls back into a safety. But he's got to be in excellent position. Well, Knightstown getting ready for another play here with 6.15 and counting on the clock in the fourth quarter. The ball at the 41-yard line. A second and 13 play here as the ball is handed off to Johnson, and he is hit. Uh, after a pickup of about three yards on the play, Ryan Johnson hit going over the right side. So Knightstown doing everything they can to move this ball against Pioneer, but the speed of this Pioneer team just really taking them down. Well, in basketball, you tell the kids that you don't have to be big. You just have to be well-conditioned, well-technique, uh, stuff like that. And that's something that Knightstown has seen firsthand tonight because Pioneer is not a big football team, without a doubt, much, much smaller than the Panthers. Shyman trying to get things going again, working out of a split back situation. The ball snap. Shyman back looking to pass over into the left flat. The ball's thrown and just out of the grasp of Craig Ritchie as another nice defensive move there made by David Russell as just at the last moment he came around and got a hand up onto the ball and uh, the speed once again showing up for these Pioneer Panthers. You know, if Russell had wanted and had the energy to intercept that, he could have. I don't really believe he could have because he was laying off of the, the outside shoulder of Richie and just moved around on the inside but couldn't uh, couldn't pull the ball in. Ian Hayes had to come back out of the ball game. Just couldn't go. So Knightstown facing a fourth and ten will punt. So guess who? 81, Josh Plank back to punt. Q in the backfield now, and the kick is blocked by the Pioneers, and it looks like they're going to put the ball... Back into action at the Knightstown 33-yard line. Well, I wish somebody just let the clock run with 5-12. Pioneer, Pioneer has got down. yet another chance to score here and to break that 50-point mark for the third time this season. Playing just a little slow and getting the foot into that football, and now all the, the linemen come over a little bit dejected, a little bit upset. They're frustrated. Uh, what a bad, bad way that it can leave a sour taste in your mouth to lose this one in the championship game by this much of a, of a margin, but... Again, Knightstown has had an out outstanding football season, best in school history. Well, they really have as uh, Tate Odom gets things set and going again, handing off to Pugh, taking it over the left side and uh, being brought down after a pickup of about four yards. So uh, Pugh still running out there uh, with great ability and great speed. Uh, under five minutes to play and the clock continuing to run. And finally, we start to see some of the exiting of the Knightstown huge crowd that made it over from Knightstown and surrounding area. And they start to head for the exit as they know this one is academic. Odom once again uh, trying to get things uh, back into another touchdown for the Panthers as he keeps the ball on an option, pitches it out, and the ball uh, was uh, pitched to the ground. So uh, that's when you know everything's working. was incomplete. That's when you know things are working in your advantage. When you throw the ball near the, the line of scrimmage, Jamie Wallen fumbles it and it rolls ahead of two yards, so you still pick up two in a broken play, you know, when that when things are working in your favor. I told you I should have brought that rabbit's foot. <laughs> a third and five situation facing the Pioneers here as the ball is on the 28-yard line of Knightstown. Long conference there by the Pioneers in the huddle as they pull up to the football now, trying to get... Yet another touchdown against these Knightstown Panthers. Man in motion to the left. Ball is handed off to Wallen, the second man through. An, another great fake by Odom as they pick up the first down for the Panthers. Well, without a doubt, Knightstown was the class of the football in the area teams around Newcastle, Tri, Shenandoah. Of course, Hagerstown had an outstanding year, but nobody got as far as the Knightstown Panthers. And all of a sudden, it looked like the Pioneer fans have awakened and they just realized that they're going to win a state championship. So Odom, once again, with the ball at the 23-yard line, calling the signals. Handoff to Pew, uh, going over the left side. He is hit by the Knightstown Panthers, but uh, looks like he picked up about 
uh, two yards that time on the carry. You know, in the regional championship, Whiting lost by only three points to Pioneer. And I, I'd love to see and know exactly what they did to offset this speed unless they were just equally as quick. Well, that's a good possibility uh, that two of them coming head-to-head -head, uh, like that. Uh, is that even possible? Well, I, I have somebody it, that quick? I think it is. A clone? Goodness. Pioneer sending one man wide to the left now as Odom calling the signals once again. It has a man going in motion to the right. Handoff is to Pew again as he goes over the right side this time and uh, looks to have Pugh picked up the uh, about five yards it looks like on the Line carry. Yeah, who knows? Just give him the ball and give him five yards. It's automatic. If he doesn't pick four to five right up, down. he was averaging four yards per carry in the first half of action. And I would be willing to bet you now that that has almost doubled in the second half. Pew able to uh, just run that ball at will at the Knightstown Panthers and that great speed that he has. Uh, once that first foot comes down, he is set for the top speed that he's got. Two minutes on the clock as the Knightstown Panthers are down 49-21. A handoff again to Pew as he stutter steps and then picks up a little speed to the line and looks like picks up the first down for the Pioneers. You know, I don't know if he's big enough to play Division One football, but he is one heck of a, of a back. He may be able to go to a small college, and I don't know if his size is going to make any difference because if he doesn't already have some scouts looking at him, there needs to be somebody waking somebody up because this kid is tough. 5'8 and 166 pounds has uh, really uh, worn down the Knightstown Panther defense, and it's great speed in this 5'8, 166 pounds. Let me tell you, as Odom sets two men in motion, handoff once again to Pew, who dives ahead for five more yards. You know, he's not going to play football or actually fullback in college because he's not big enough, but uh, still. They're bringing in a whole new lineup, and they're going to try to let them score with the new lineup in. The entire line, backfield, quarterback, everything has come in, and they get a standing ovation from the Pioneer fans and with much respect, as they should. Well, they really should because uh, it's been a great day for the Pioneer uh, Panthers, and they do have terrific speed, and uh, that's exactly how they got to this level of play because it wasn't from just brute strength. It was nothing but the speed that they have as a unit. Hand off that time from the new quarterback, Joe DeBort. Goes to Shane Weaver. Shane Weaver going over the right side and uh, being stopped at the line by the Knightstown Panthers. Kyle Rhodes in on the stop as the clock is at 31 seconds and 30 and counting. And Knightstown going to come out a state runner-up. Runner-up in this contest this afternoon. Not sure if they can punch this one in. Hopefully not. Let's keep them under the 50-point barrier. That'll be the high point of the afternoon. Go to board. Defense. Downs the ball. And a flag Immediately flies. we have a flag. With that five seconds left. Play. you got to be kidding me. So, don't know what the penalty is. Looks like it's going to go against the Pioneers as the... Uh, Referee is standing that way, and that's exactly motion. what's going to happen. Must be a motion penalty against Pioneer, against Pioneer as the Pioneer coaching staff, I think, is just as eager to get this over with as uh, the Knightstown staff is. Four seconds and counting on the clock as the clock is going down, and the Knightstown Panthers go down to Pioneer 49-21. That's the final score. Your Class 1A champs for 1997 are the Pioneer Panthers from Cass County near Logansport. And without a doubt, your player of the game has to be Michael Pugh as Knightstown will go over and congratulate Pioneer on a great, great game. And they were led by senior quarterback Tate Odom. And he's another young man that should be able to play college football somewhere, some way. Well, he really should. And the entire Knightstown fan base that is here on their feet and applauding these Knightstown Panthers as... Well, they should. These kids uh, played the best football that they could against this Pioneer Panther unit, but they just flat did not have the speed that it took to beat them. No, nope. and it, it's been a, a very, very good season for your Knightstown Panther squad. Final score, 49-21. Knightstown will end the season at a very, very respectable 14-1, and the Pioneer Panthers 